start that recording and start that stream. Welcome to Horsin' Around, a dumbass cast. I'm your host as always, Nick Bergadante, and with me today I have three lovely guests if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Uh, sure thing. I'm Dylan. I'm, I'm Kobe. I'm Mark. Hello, hello, hello. And today we are discussing another roundup of best of the years, this time with music, our albums of the year for 2023. Um, and I'll jump right in and say that my number three pick, uh, it was a little bit of here and there. There were some other albums that were close, but I think I settled on. Uh, but here we are by the Foo Fighters. Um, just, you know, if you like the Foo Fighters, you're going to love this album. It is a pretty hard-hitting piece that has, um, I, I think it, it goes above and beyond, like, some of their other projects for me, because it delivers on, um, just kind of the bitter sweetness and, and sorrow that's going into it, because I think the, I, I don't, I'm going to make sure I don't completely fuck this up. I know it is in memoriam to, I think the album's drummer passed away, um, while they were on tour, and I think, uh, the lead artist, uh, not, I don't know why I keep thinking Dave, this fucking Dave Chad. Grohl. Yeah, Dave Grohl. I keep thinking, like, when I think of the Foo Fighters lead artist, I, for some reason, Chad Kroger Chad keeps Kroger? coming to mind. Yeah, <laughs> no, no Nickelback. that's Nickelback, I know, but I, like, yeah, but Dave Grohl's, I think, mom also passed away, um, while they were writing this, and so it's like, it's a Foo Fighter album that's also, uh, an hour long eulogy to their, their, you know, friends and loved ones. Um, and honestly, like the whole thing goes, but just specifically the last track rest is like, just gives me chills every time I listen to it. And it's such a perfect send off to, to their loved ones. And like, just everything about it really vibes with that, with the tone that they're going for while still being a great Foo Fighters album. Um, so yeah, love love that one to pieces, and that's that's my number three. Have they developed at all, like over time, or I know like some like in different genres they have different ideas. So like mm -hmm. in hip hop, sometimes you have like people who change a lot. And sometimes you have people who don't really change much at all. Has have has like their sound changed over time, or is this um... kind of like a send off in the way that they're playing the hits? Yeah, I or think... making new songs that are like the hits. I honestly, I, I think there's there's been a couple albums in between this and their more classic stuff that I haven't really uh, listened to that much, and that stuff may have been more experimental. I think I would call this like a return to form in a sense, in that it definitely sounds like a more refined and focused version of um, what they've been, you know, what they did in their uh, kind of older albums. I'm trying to see what their older shit was called. It's coming to mind. No, uh, I didn't. Um, I didn't get a chance to listen to like albums in between like this and like you know some of like the two thousand era albums. But this, th I mean, it sounds like a Foo Fighters album. Like you yeah. listen to it, and it it sounds like the Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl, you know, has such a very like, distinct voice, iconic voice. Yeah, that is that is that's his own. It's got those you know hard guitar riffs. Mm -hmm. um, it's. It doesn't really feel like anything super out of the ordinary, except just the tone of the album is like that much more like it's a little more somber. It deals kind of a little more with themes of just like love and loss. Mm -hmm. um, I think my favorite out, uh, song off that track, I forget which one it is. What I think it's was it I the long one? How I think it's Show Me How. It's the one where Dave Grohl's daughter is like harmonizing with. Him. That is so fun. That is the one song I did not save off that really? album. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it was Dave Grohl's daughter though. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of it's it's the least Foo Fightersy out of all of them. It's like mm. it's like almost like a ballad. Mm. Um, it's sweet. It's very cute. Um, it's a little out of place, kind of, but I uh, like. I think sometimes the Foo Fighters just kind of sounds a little samey sometimes. Oh yeah, I can I, totally like, see I, that. So this this album it's it's one of the more interesting parts on yeah. this album. Uh, I do really like that that super long ten minute song. The teacher, yeah. Um, it evolves pretty nicely, but it's not like 
maybe it doesn't need to be a full 10 minutes, but it's not bad for being that long for sure. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's a good try. Yeah. So does it have kind of the same vibes of like Ginger did? Uh, uh, from Brockhampton. I Ooh. do not that's know. A, hmm, that's an interesting question. I feel like Ginger, um, I fire like oh, man, Ginger. It was like, lost in a different way, but I think it um uh, it kind of sounds more- like they were. There's a lot more personal catharsis on Ginger, I'd say. Like, a lot of it is, like, the band members, like, kind of coming to terms with the loss, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, and like, their 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 careers and stuff. I'd say that Here We Are is less, like, cathartic like that or, like, you know, exploratory of their feelings so much as it is just kind of... It, it, it's It's more like the end stage of dealing with, like... This yeah, kind of grief, that's right? the it's like the they're, acceptance they're taking, stage. They're taking all these, these, they're taking all these lessons that they've they've learned and like kind of teaching them outwards. You know, Dave is singing with his daughter about, like Dave singing with his daughter about like, um, love and letting go, and it like it it pretty much stays pretty firmly in that like, like remembrance, love, letting go. Generally, it's positive, like throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Being, like, but uh, Ginger, I'd say Ginger was more like. There was a, just a lot of like more raw emotion on Ginger. I'd say mm-hmm. that was trying to be okay. handled. Yeah, yeah. I just to I guess make more specific description of of their last song, Rest. It like starts out super quiet and like almost lullaby in tone, which is you know again not super what they're known for um with the Foo Fighters but then like it after about halfway through the song it like erupts into this super noisy um like you know loud uh, guitar riffs that kind of are the final send off to the the ones that they've lost and I just think it's like a really good contrast to like I don't know it, you know, see someone for the last time before they're, you know, lowered or cremated or whatever, and then just having the memory of them live on it's like, just gets delivered super strong in that, in that final note for me, at least. Um, and that really pulls it all together in the end. The, the album's title track, actually, is, is, a, is a pretty, like, it's one of the more like, emotionally charged songs on it, now I think about it. It's a little more, it has a little more of that kind of catharsis I was mentioning, where, like... yeah. It, it's like it's like i i you know i kept i kept you in my heart i you were important to me and now here we are kind of after the fact and, and dealing with it so like they're yeah. they're they're i really i also really like that song so yeah yeah um but yeah it's it's it's, it's not it's it's a it's a it's a it's a cleaner it's a cleaner grief grief album than, than something like ginger as a whole mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah that's uh my number three pick so uh dylan what you got for number three my uh, my number three was really hard to pick. I was choosing between a few, but I settled uh, on Beloved Paradise Jazz by McKinley Dixon, um, which is this... It's it in, I, it's an incredibly beautiful, jazzy, like alternative, slightly experimental hip-hop album. It's not really that experimental in terms of like noise or it's not it doesn't have like the most experimental production but it is it's certainly like alternative hip-hop and a lot of it is a lot of it is just a lot of the album is just kind of love to to a lot of the album is love to blackness really um it starts off with a reading of um tony morrison i think if i don't i'm not messing that up uh yeah hanif reads tony i imagine yeah, it's tony morrison Hanif reads yeah tony it's from tony morrison's jazz and it's like this whole excerpt about you know like new york in well new york across time from like the 20s to like the 80s which is when i think it was written mm-hmm. and like as it goes forward it you know he, he paints like these he, he paints these pictures of like spending time like with his friends and like 
you know, dealing dealing with like just just dealing with life. Uh, hit the kitchen table, like live from the kitchen table, is one of these like incredible songs off the album that where he like sets, um, uses like the kitchen table as like a stage for like talking like talking about family and like uh, his relationship with like his mother and like the people that are important to him. Um, yeah. There's like introspective songs too, like Tyler Forever, which is sort of which which starts off as like this um kind of like ag- aggressive like flashy song about about you know someone someone you know his friend is sensibly named named tyler and like how 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 he's trying to keep him in remembrance and how it how the track like later kind of splits into him being introspective about how yeah i guess sometimes we we lie and you know make things up when we're writing you know music and poetry and art to embellish and and remember people the way we want to instead of you know maybe the truth about how everything is mm-hmm. um the and just the the jazz throughout the record is it, mm, so good so yeah. fucking good um, yeah my it's only so real beautiful. problem with this record is that it's only 28 minutes yeah, it's fast. Um, it's it is it's tight. Sh- it's a tight thirty, but it's fucking gorgeous. Each track, I, I feel hits. like it utilizes that time so well. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I would like more tracks as well. This album surprised me. I just listened to it an hour ago for the first time, and I was very pleasantly surprised with the production value, just the lyrics that were that were given, and what the message of the album had to say. I was very impressed with this. Yeah, fuck it goes. I like. I started. I do my list of like top 10 you know finds in a given year which is not necessarily music that came out in a year but just things that i found through you know recommendations or whatever and i started 2024's list with one of these songs because like i had not heard this before and it just sounds it just sounds fucking immaculate i again i love i love me some good saxophones um and this this album absolutely fucking delivers so god damn Hell of, a, hell of a way to to kick things off, really. Like I think of the albums that y'all submitted, this might be my favorite of like the new things that I've heard. Um, it's just it's just very very mwah, chef's kiss on the production and every you know everything about it. So yeah, it's an yeah. easy easy recommend. Short again, thirty minutes. Like throw it on. I it's. I when I listen to albums and when I listen to all the albums this year, if I like log them, I, I I generally took time to like do nothing but listen to the album. Like I sat down, maybe like at my chair, like in my bed, and just like listened to it and and focused on the album. And I think yeah. this is, despite being like thirty minutes and potentially an easy listen through, it also benefits if you can like take the time to like really listen to it uh, and like uh, look at look at the lyrics critically, listen yeah. to the music listen to the music you know critically if you can and think of thinking about how the songs are structured and stuff like that yeah so yeah great great number three pick uh kobe what do you what do you got for your number three yeah uh my number three this year was uh welcome to college grove uh the sequel to college grove uh lil wayne and two chains uh came back together and made a collab album that really took me by surprise i I am a huge Lil Wayne fan, and I pretty much like all of the music that he produces. Even though, like sometimes, and I agree, like Lil Wayne may be more of a one of the best feature artists rather than like making his own album sometimes. But like his bat, his earlier albums, like the whole Carter series, I think are just uh, spectacular. And I'm gonna put well, Welcome to Collar Grow up there. I think the way that this album was structured, it was really one having the entire album narrated by 50 cent was such a nice that's such a nice touch uh throughout this sequence and i think what it go ahead so is that, is that 50 cent on all like the all the scenes oh uh, uh, yeah uh when it's like broken up into like the blockbuster film scenes that is 50 cent uh narrating us through I, it i did not realize that yeah and even though like i think sometimes like thematically the songs don't quite fit each scene uh the brief interludes i do think effectively frame the the overall like big budget movie that they're trying to screen and produce throughout this whole thing uh where this album really 
hit off, like hit the mark was you could tell that two chains and Lil Wayne clearly invested in a much more than their first go around in terms of production. Like the production in this is just immaculate. Um, even like when you read the production lineup, it really reads like a hall of fame. You have, I'm looking at a list right now. You have Manny Fresh, DJ to juicy J and Mike Dean. Like this is an insane production lineup. Uh, and every song on here, I just think the, in the end does flow well together for me. And I just love hearing these two back at it. I, I, I definitely have thoughts about this album. Not most of them, honestly, this, this was not a particularly high up album for me. Um, but if I don't know if, if anyone wants to speak better or yeah, better or worse yeah. than the than the first one for you because you said you listened the, to the, to the I first didn't, one no, right? I didn't get to, I, oh, I you didn't get to, to it to the first call oh I like the first one a lot but um, yeah I just, I should give it another listen I like some of them off of it I like fucking uh, PPA into Oprah and Gale back to back Oprah and Gale is my favorite song off the album I think um, um, Oprah and Gale is a fantastic song. But of of the ones I listened to, this one was the the most spotty. But I also I, I think I need to give it another listen and, and oh, yeah. see if it hits different a second time around. I, I, um, I think the, the best reasons... part about listening. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I think one of the reasons Oprah and Gale is so so good, like so good, especially compared to like other songs on the album, is that in my opinion, Two Chains is not pulling his weight on most of this album. <laughs> oh no, I think like Two Chains, like he is. Pretty much every song is improves. A lot of the songs just improve dramatically once it's just Lil Wayne's part. Uh, Lil Wayne is you know goes goes fucking dumb like all the time on this album. Um, but Two Chains is like sometimes I just like can't focus on him rapping. Like it's so I don't know. Like I just start to fall asleep. It's a little boring. At times. <laughs> um, I don't. I feel. And, I feel like the the push and pull between them. I think it was very even for me. I didn't like. Yeah, this isn't Two Chain's strongest outing, but I think it was fine enough where it wasn't a huge distraction for me. There, when when Two Chain's like goes like does a good job on this album, like it it's really good. Like, it, I don't know. So it's just. I wish it was. He was just more consistent. I also have like gripes with uh well right i i don't agree that all the production on this album is a, is good um i have de i definitely have problems with fucking pressure i'm gonna kill bangladesh dude fuck that guy <laughs> <laughs> fuck that guy dude. pressure the beat on the whole pressure, country the beat on pressure is fucking ass uh guess uh, what millie you, millie isn't even that good of a song either you don't got 15k real. plays though he got uh, pre pressure got 15k plays it's the highest it's the highest played song on the album on spotify i fucking am i it's mean sorry so... 15 million 15.7 million jesus christ that, it's so i hate listening to this fucking song dude not only is <laughs> not only is two shades bad on this but jesus christ this whistling this <laughs> just i could piss this out at fl studio <laughs> <laughs> Like it's not even like, it's not even I like sometimes it. people are like like listen to this Beyonce like track without any Beyonce on it and it's like how did she do anything with this? They didn't do anything with it. They didn't do anything on pressure. It still sucks. I swear. But Bang Bangladesh, I I have a bone to fucking pick with Bangladesh, man. I, I <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> I can't believe you hate that whole country. No, I, I think that this album is like as you get into some southern rap you get to the points where you're not gonna have you're gonna put 21 songs on an album and you're not gonna get 21 good songs <laughs> you might not get 10 but you just get, get a solid seven you get a solid <laughs> seven or you get a solid five and you go with that and you get to hear just i like it feels like they're fucking around and i love it <laughs> that these two rich ass men are fucking around and Lil it's Wayne so is funny. just oh, okay. Lil Wayne is probably high as fuck just saying whatever comes to mind and it flows really well Bro, like Lil, Lil Wayne is good when he's doing that he's so good yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. look, look, like, look at the album cover he was asleep when they took that they, 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 they found him asleep on the couch and they took a picture of him <laughs> the album like this I don't think that the point of the album is to have good songs 
everywhere <laughs> and it's going to be spotty. What is the point? That the point is that you <laughs> it's throw, a fun album. There's I, a lot I of guess. You just throw some shit at a wall and sometimes <laughs> it sounds stupid and sometimes it hits. Like pressure sounds stupid, but it hits. Uh, like th- there's a lot of songs on here that are stupid, but then when they hit, they hit right. And that's I like this. Al- I like this album because of that. It wouldn't have been on my best albums, but I'm having fun. Yeah, I mean, my best albums were already picked, so I had to start pulling from other albums that I listened to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had we had some albums, some layover I mean, overlaid picks in here. This is so two chains album. Yeah, I, you, there's no two chains album that has three good songs back to back to back. <laughs> you're not gonna get one because that's not what it's for. The two chains what? the two chains albums are for having fun whenever he ends up, whenever he ends up showing up. And it is incredible that you are arguing for midness being a virtue of a two chains album. But no, I I just think that the it's important to put that into context when you're when you're evaluating the album is evaluating the history of two chains. And if anybody knows the history of two chains the most in this group, it is me. Um, well, I, I'm not gonna. Okay, I'm I did lie when I say there's not three good two chain songs back to back to back there's not four good two chain songs back to back to back uh no lie birthday song and i'm different are all back to back on based on a true story i'm sorry two chains <laughs> I, I i owe you another one i, I do have three on collar grove but that's <laughs> maybe because one of my favorite fucking songs on this album is crazy thick i think this song is fucking hysterical this is like the, the grossest funniest fucking song i there's one of my gripes with this album is like there is i feel like there's too much rapping about pussy on this album like, i get Not tired of it it's after so a while but, 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 but crazy dylan hates women like confirmed song, the crazy crazy thing as a song just does it perfectly it takes, it takes <laughs> it all the way it's you so say, good you, you say a titty boy talks about too much pussy? You're talking, you're talking about titty boy. <laughs> oh my god. Also, speaking of 21 good songs, guess who wasn't a good feature on this fucking album? 21 Savage. He oh no. Sucked. Oh, oh no. Right. I'm serious. He's been on like, the greatest feature run that I've ever seen. He drops one bad one. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not saying that twenty. I'm not saying anything about Twenty One Savage as an artist as a whole. I just mean his. He his feature on this album is flaccid. It is a flaccid fucking feature, dude. Well, why does like, he always got to be hard? Why can't he? Why can't he throw out some? Because he's ones? just. I mean... He's just. <laughs> bro, I can. I can see the perk hitting. When he's... <laughs> rapping dude uh, he, just, he just goes monotone like i he's, he's he's got a fucking line every song sound the same in his feature if i took all of his lines on this song and reordered them it would be the same song <laughs> like it's so it's like dude oh, i was i always like when uh benny the butcher uh puts out stuff i think benny is benny the pretty good so yeah i I've been quiet for most of this discussion because I know I'm the, the other grape I have. I am definitely not in the majority on, but I think it still holds from my assessment from uh, his feature on Dot FM. I'm still not the biggest fan of Little Wayne's voice. I just it's better. Uh, it's gotten better you, on this album. Just, oh, it's okay. okay. <laughs> it's okay. You can just admit you're racist. I mean, it's okay, cool. Murky. I, for, for the sake of like this podcast, just stop where you. I know. I know. I know. I just, that's, <laughs> fucker. that's the only other note I had. I, but it's it. Come it on. didn't. I didn't mind it as much. But there were still points where I was just like, I'm not liking this. This is the Little Wayne versus here. Okay, so sure. like around the world, droning on for like a good five to seven minutes is good. But I don't. Wayne I can't does, explain like, myself. I don't. I don't know what to tell you other than I. Like that, and I don't like. I don't like Little Wayne's voice. I don't know what to tell you. It, and it's just that's just what stop, it is. Stop, stop while you're ahead. You haven't <laughs> heard your favorite two artists' voice, real voices ever, on the song. They don't. 
You know that's not actually Guy Man and Thomas singing, right? They're just sampling. Is it not? That's all they do. Yeah, they're just sampling Murphy, a bunch of shit. Honest question. Either Either way, so that my point still stands. Then you haven't heard think, their real voices. No, I, think yeah, some, yeah. I think some of them are vote coded like lyrics. Like maybe Murphy, maybe Ran Maxis question. memories. I think pretty much all of Discovery was was sampling. I don't think I don't think any of that was like actually recorded themselves like on a mic. What's up? Murky, have yeah. you listened to the Carter 1 through 5? The Carter 1 through 5. I you don't even have now. to do 1 through 5. Just do 3 through 5. If you're if you're going into it, start with 3 through 5. I have not listened to it. I I, I will be willing to, to throw that on. The Carter, and then if you still don't like Lil Wayne after that, well, then I... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> did, did, did either... Did anyone listen to fucking... Um... The fix before the six. I didn't listen to it. Yes, yeah. I listen to good? everything that Lil Wayne puts out. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I guess on I, mean, I. So some of these are old songs, and uh, I I. So I'm not the hugest fan of it, but I think that one of the songs is really funny. And it's cat food. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to spend like way too much time on it because it's like a different album. I just want to think about like Carter Six is gonna come out what this year, right? Probably. Mm-hmm. Probably. Uh, Something. yeah. I guess I got some. I, I also I also listened to the Fix before the Six, and there's a reason why I put Welcome to Collar Grove over that one. Okay. All right. I'm here, girl. I got that cat food. Ooh, Purina. Ooh, Purina. It's wet, Katrina. Cat hanging out the. <laughs> Ooh, that cheetah. No, Ooh, no, like, no, no. Girl, I got that cat food. Ooh, all right, I, I will. I will really listen. Makes that sound good too. It's it, all right. It's so silly. It's I, a silly song. I can, I can recognize when I'm in the wrong, and I will, I will give the the, the albums you recommended a listen since there's apparently a six one coming out. And uh, just do three through three, four, and five. Three, okay. four, and five are some of the greatest albums that that hip hop that current hip-hop is based off of okay um three three is especially but back to to 2023 uh mark what (laughs) you got for your number number three pick for for albums of the year uh i want to make it clear to everyone (laughs) out here that i put sos on here yes that okay i will i will take i will take the blame that i did not catch this at the beginning it was very last minute that dylan and i had an epiphany Dylan had an epiphany and pass it on. Two, uh, December 9th, 2022 is not 2022. Okay, but again, I would we agree. Are... I'm kind of just I'm kind of just messing with it. I'm kind <laughs> of just messing with it. I think so for my number three album, mm-hmm. I am going to put I, I'm gonna open it on my side tab. It is the uh Call Me If You Get Lost, the Estate Sale. Mm-hmm. Um that is uh that came out in 2023, March 31st, 2023. Um, I just, it's more of an album that I loved and it's, it's great. It feels so nice to have like an extension onto this. Um, it's more it, Tyler. Whole, it's, it's a Tyler as a creator album. Did we already talk about, we talked about this album last year, right? So I don't, I don't have to really go into that. We did. Uh, but I, I think so. We should have. <clears throat> There's no way we didn't. Uh, well, we did. I, I mean, if this like this album would have come out after we did our discussions, we did, we weren't we were doing the 2020. Well, if you lost. No, the call original call made you get lost. Oh, this is the deluxe edition. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, then so, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So we. Well, anyways, I am. It's it's kind of. It feels like Tyler's kind of completed what he's had to say mm-hmm. especially with like like ending like uh sorry not sorry and like uh so i'm uh, it's i'll be interested to see where tyler the creator goes next with his because it doesn't i don't know how much more evolution that we can expect i mean from like where he came from to where he is now is definitely like a great evolution of its own i just hope that um I just hope that he doesn't end up like other other people who finish run out of things to say and then kind of just stay there for a while. Um, <laughs> Drake, the <laughs> Drake. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I need to Max Ween. <laughs> it's just. I guess 
I guess I, I don't know. I I I do really love this. Like it's a great addition to the uh, "Call Me If You Get Lost." It kind it fits if all the songs fit with it really well. I love this. I love this. I mean, I think it's it is the way to do a deluxe album. I think it add, it definitely doesn't feel like it added like cut song. It felt like these songs. More new, more like content. specially made. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, like we want to expand what this album meant rather than just like, hey, here's some stuff that was left on the cutting room floor that didn't make sense. Like, I listened this to this, app. I listened to this once, maybe twice, I think, and I was pretty impressed with like what they did in terms of the deluxe. I think that, uh, I think that I'm really happy to see ASAP Rocky back there again because that was like a big exclusion from the first from this album was like asap rocky and uh, tyler the creator are really good friends They're tight. why They're haven't tight we fun. why haven't we heard anything from them together in a long time i mean like we all know that like uh he was like asap <laughs> rocky was out there like getting like with uh rihanna and like uh doing like regular life stuff but we kind of missed having their kind of collaboration back together again and it i'm hoping that this means that they're maybe talking again or chilling out again because it seems like to me tyler the creator even was like what what's going on uh mm. from like a lot of his stuff that he was posting it kind of seemed like he didn't talk to asap rocky either like i i guess we couldn't be we it does we don't have to be privy to all that but it doesn't seem like they had been doing anything mm. out in public so i'm glad to see them together I love mm-hmm. ASAP Rocky. He was my, he was my one of my major introductions into um, hip hop, yeah. and yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and I, I saw my favorite new my top album artist when I went to go see uh, Tyler the Creator on tour for "Call Me If You Get Lost." Oh, nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to to spot the the new tracks on on this deluxe edition yet, but I, I mean, it love me some like, Tyler. So, if I'm if I'm doing my math correctly, it's eight new songs, and it's like another yep. half an hour added on to this. Oh yeah. So that's like that's an album in itself. That's why I think it's so impressive as a deluxe because it wasn't just cutting room floor stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, another great number three pick. Uh, moving back to me for number two. Tonal shifting all over the place. Uh, we've got 10,000 Gex. <laughs> Fucking, I love, I, and since I think I, I probably fell down the hyper pop hole in like either tail end of 21 or 22 with like, uh, fucking, um, Dorian Electra was like probably the first major artist like that I was really getting into their stuff with. Um, and I liked, I, I know, um, Dylan, you mentioned before the show that you did go back and, and get a chance to listen to A Thousand Gex before yeah. this new album. I, that, that album, it was a little bit much for me when I was getting started with Hyperpop. A little, like, a, a lot of it was just, like, a little too overwhelming for me to get, like, really in on. Um, really? But with 10,000 Gex, I just fucking love the zaniness of it from front to, from front to back. Just, if you haven't heard it, just listen to the first track, and you'll know if you're ready for whatever the fuck comes next, if you are all right with that track, because it opens with the goddamn THX, uh, like, boot-up sound for movies, and then three gunshots, and the rawest fucking guitar you've ever fucking heard just tearing into your eardrums while uh, the fucking sister goes on about how she's the dumbest girl alive with fucking so hilarious thigh high socks and your Raytheon contracts. <laughs> get over here now oh my god we love hyper pop yeah and, and like i think it also represents. it helps that i'm i admittedly i do also enjoy ska which can be a very polarizing genre i i understand some people just fucking hate the sound of it but i love it and this album is also using that as one of its bigger influences this time around um i'm pretty sure it's it's kind of in a lot of hyper pop in general but like it's very very evident in some of these songs like frog on the floor and i got my tooth removed um and they all just are a blast to listen to i don't know i fucking 
I fucking love it. Even the songs that I didn't like enjoy on my first run through with like Billy Knows Jamie. One mil God, they use it they have a song that uses the fucking TikTok lady as like the main vocal like refrain on it. And it's so annoying, but I can't bring myself to hate it because it's so fucking funny at the same time. Um and yeah, I don't know. Just just front to back, like zany ass shit that I that I love listening to. Can't get enough of it. Um yeah. Did you refer to Laura Less as? Are they are they siblings? No, no. What? <laughs> no, not at all. They're just they're just they're just like they're just I, music partners. Oh, I fucking damn! This all guy right. I did not read the uh, Spotify description. That's, that's the crazy because I, I swear I have read their Spotify description before, and it just says a duo, and it's not. I just assumed that they were siblings for some reason. You're, they you're don't totally even have right. The same last name. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, my I don't, brain I has exploded. I. They, they both are from St. Louis. Um, or St. Louis. I don't know how the fuck St. Louis people say it. If it's St. <laughs> I think it, I think you got it, St. Louis. Um, but like, uh. Yeah, they met in high school. Oh, okay. So they're just like not they're they're not siblings. So that that just like caught me off guard. So I didn't go for that. Yeah, my bad. Um, I don't know why. I just I guess I just saw they were both blonde, maybe, and that just made me think. I don't know if I can know, man. No, I I I have sorry. Did you did you finish your thoughts about the album? Yeah, that's basically the long and short of it. It's just fun front to back. Yeah. So I I like this album. Maybe a little less than. A thousand gex but like i do still i i they're, they're very similar like I, I read them pretty similarly they just have very different vibes where like you like you said like a, a thousand gex was kind of hard for you to listen to but like I, I, the thing i like about a thousand gex is like it sounds a little more noisy a little more experimental a little a little more like sonically zany and a little more like bucking around in the production Mm-hmm. And then ten thousand gex does, but ten thousand gex like the songs like all flow well. They're they're all over the place, but comparatively like they flow much. They have somehow easily, in the zaniness easily. they have a flow to them. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the other things, one of the other things I do really like about this album is I think just in general as time goes on and Laura Less is more comfortable with her voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a lot of a lot of her like. A lot of her and other hyperpop artists have this like, um, have have like such a, a big like big influences of like vocal manipulation and oh, yeah. kind of mm-hmm. nightcore some nightcore adjacent like yeah like, yeah production value to like towards vocals because they're a lot of them are transgender women who like want to like yeah change their voice their vo- like yeah. w- want want to like you know play around with their voice as something that is not easily is not like easy e- like sometimes for like Laura Less I'm pretty sure has mentioned that she was not always like super comfortable like with her voice like as she was like making music and like as time went on like I think in this in this in this album like you hear a lot more of Laura Less's like like yeah no like, she's on voice yeah than, less auto tune than, than a thousand than... gigs so it's, like mm. she's she's become more comfortable with it I think it's a great voice yeah um, I think I think she does a great job there mm-hmm. um uh and. Yeah, it's like really impressive how like they kind of mostly like sh- had an album that, that like flows together somehow at least to me. Mm-hmm. Um, though I still have, I I mentioned this earlier. I I think that the kind of song that somehow still sticks out like a sore thumb to me as uh, is I got my tooth removed, which is like funny because <laughs> the last time they did ska like on a thousand gex was like I I thought it was really good there. Mm-hmm. This time it's not bad. It's just like. I don't know. It it doesn't doesn't fit quite as well. Yeah, but, that's, that's uh, interesting. Frog, I, the, Frog on the floor. It's got to be one of my favorites. It, that's metal, that's so interesting. Though, track, like, oh yeah, so the crazy. fucking Billy knows Jamie, right? Fucking, Such yeah. a good song. Yeah, I. Let's go, Carolyn. Go with. Is it, yeah, yeah, this I just listened to this album an hour ago as well, and this album gave me such a headache in the best and worst possible way I ever <laughs> experienced. <laughs> uh, Half of this album, I was like, okay. Half of this album, I fucking hate it. <laughs> <Because it's, laughs> 
I like this is such I I messaged uh Nick right after I said this album gave me such tonal whiplash like I needed to like take a step a step away from my computer because my head was just hurting yeah but yeah I never have listened to 100 gex before this was my first uh experience uh with them oh, and I mean <laughs> I mean it's it's interesting <laughs> I don't I don't see myself returning to this <laughs> oh yeah maybe if like it might be something that I, I have to like really sit down like get myself in the mindset it's like i think i wasn't mentally prepared for <laughs> you don't have the correct with. cocktail of mental illness <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it reminded me like of, of another band that i heard at second sky the one time they uh it, they sang a song called the government knows you masturbate uh, yes like, oh my god who that, that, that i know that song the, i know what you're talking yeah. about who did yeah, that? that is like the exact vibe i had throughout this entire album like, if you <laughs> told me 100 gex sang the government knows you masturbate i would be like yeah that makes sense like so yeah. it is a very specific type of pop some of the pop worked for me some of the pop didn't Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessarily a bad album. It's just I didn't vibe with half of it, but I will be returning to Billy Knows Jamie. I think uh, mm -hmm. that is an incredible new metal song. So that uh, so, so there is my question because at least like Frog on the Floor and Tooth Removed are very ska influenced. So do you not enjoy ska? Is my follow up question. <laughs> I think the I gotta go back to the to the track. I, list. I am the first person to call myself a ska disliker. How um, dare I, you? I can't wait, 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 I'm not part of the third wave ska. <laughs> I think something about these guys. I am. I think, Let's go. Think, Pick uh, it up. <laughs> I think the run of Doritos and Fritos to one million dollars was my favorite part of that whole album. That is so crazy, dude! Fucking one million dollars is probably my least favorite, just because like I can't, I can't get over the TikTok voice. It, that just takes me out so goddamn it's so hard. Funny. It's it's, so funny. it's funny, but I hate it. I hate that they they made that choice, and it like I get why they made it. I just I can't but fucking I, I stand it. I swear to God. These artists had like a fucking spinning wheel, and they wrote down what genre, and they just started spinning the wheel as they were like, yeah. oh, "We got ten, we got ten tracks to do. Let's <laughs> spin the wheel real quick and see what we're gonna make." Spin the fucking wheel, but yeah, it's just taking you know whatever and just putting it to eleven in like every yeah. aspect of you know, it. You know, it's you know, crazy. like surf punk into I, new metal. <laughs> I think I do. Rock. I think that I. I don't know if it's just because A Thousand Gex was the first hyperpop album I ever listened to, but I think I like A Thousand Gex a lot more. Mm. But I also think that having more hyperpop in the world isn't a bad thing. <laughs> and I think that this album is, I, I don't know, I, I, I guess I'll have to uh, lay those, uh, those mental neurons. I got to create those neuron pathways you need to uh, smack serious. your head a couple yeah, times, lose a couple head. brain cells, and then the you're ready to listen to 10,000 gecks. I mean, the fact that we're talking about an album of laying out our neurons and <laughs> like the mental capacity and what depressions we have really just exemplifies what this fucking album is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure your therapist would much rather you didn't with this album. But Listen, at least I'm not bringing in fucking uh, DUI and fucking the, oh, the goddamn... <laughs> Um, the fucking album with yeah Estelle Allen's um, oh, what is what was it, it called? Music two. Music two. Yeah, with the fucking uh, Unabomber on the fucking yeah. album cover. Yeah. <laughs> that is like five more levels of mental illness that I I'm not ready to bring into my top of a year list yet. But like, I vibe with that album way more than I thought I would, or probably should in general. Um, this, but yeah, this album feels like when I take like. 10 milligrams of Adderall at like 3 p.m. and then I'm <laughs> up till like 3 a.m. and this is the song that is playing like while I'm like cleaning the thing that I needed to clean two weeks ago. Like that's oh, yeah. what that's what the album sounds like. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's that's my my number new number two pick of the year. Yeah, uh, go look go look up the government knows. Uh, if oh yeah, another just go, go listen to that. The government knows you. That's know, a classic. Like, it's it's a fucking. Absolutely. They definitely know. <laughs> they, they do know. They are knowers. Um, they, know they didn't assume. <laughs> All right. Dylan, what is your number two album of the year? 
second number place. two album of the year, which I know Kobe didn't get a chance to do, which is actually oh, it's, it infuriates me. <laughs> it's it's Lahai by Sampha, uh, which yeah. is maybe the most beautiful album I've listened to. Angelic, fucking gorgeous um, through and through. Like I I. I have a few like honorable mentions that hopefully we'll get to later. Two of them are like the Mitski album and the Sufjan Steven albums, uh, mm, which yep. are like Mitsuki. gorgeous albums, gorgeous fucking albums. Um, I I think this album goes above and beyond. This album changed my fucking brain chemistry. <laughs> um, Sampha, oh, some the the soundscape of this album is so. It's fucking glittery and ethereal, and you can't. You just feel like you are floating through like nearly the entire album. You have this like. There's a, there's a lot of like beautiful like piano presence on the high end that that are just like, these like gorgeous like tinkly keys. Um, mm-hmm. This like like electro like electronic influence from like these like really really like almost glitchy sounding synthesizers um it's all super like smooth and generally kind of slower pace but there's also like a really really you know a a pretty technical sounding like drum drum machine backing to like all of it where that sounds like super high pace and you wouldn't really expect to like fit in with the with the with the rest of like the production but ties it together in such what I feel like is a very living and breathing way. Like, this album is largely about, like, self-actualization and, like, kind of, like, fitting into the world, like, abstractly and... Finding your place. Kind of finding, finding your place, I guess. Like, there's... Uh, there's a lot of imagery about like flying through this whole album and mm. there's a there's a more than a few references to Jonathan Livingston Siegel which is this like short story I think or like novella um, about like a seagull who who like transcends the reality of his like flock of seagulls to like attain perfect speed <laughs> and, and and kind of like leave the world behind Mm -hmm. um this album is it's fucking gorgeous uh my favorite song is off it is probably dancing circles which is this like it's incredibly beautiful track about you know um a, a relationship with another person and and memories of things they've done uh the the track is like the the the, pian- the keys are like repetitive and haunting on this track almost mm-hmm. um but it's the, the high end of the keys are repetitive and haunting and then the the low end of the keys is like pushing this this beautiful melody this beautiful like melody that that like pushes pushes it forward and like kind of keeps it grounded in like i like i it's it it encompasses that crazy tension that you'd have lying in bed with someone that you loved and thinking about how you got there and where things could go it is so beautiful maybe my favorite song of the year probably one of my most listened to songs of the year yeah i i don't really have much to add because it just like i fell in love i i think i just stampa's voice is so angelic when, whatever he does, yeah, he's I an like, incredible vocal performer. Yeah, you know, I just could listen to that forever, and this album is just more of that. And well, you know, on top of all the other things you said, it's just such a good time. I think when I was, I, I didn't, and it didn't end up making the cut, but I think I picked Suspended as like my favorite pick from that album. But really, they're all they could all take that spot. They're all just fucking so nice to listen to, and um. Yeah, I felt. I think I heard him for the first time on like a, a Drake feature or like forty. Was it forty? No, it wasn't forty four. His uh, was his it? feature on um, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's on, where uh, I rediscovered him. Forty four twenty two. 
Oh, he was, okay. That wouldn't have been the first song you would have heard him from. Let me... I mean, that might have been check. mine, though, because I, I didn't... I, I don't know why I just listened to that one Drake album in my, like, freshman year of college, but I did, and I was like, that song's really good. And then I rediscovered... Because it didn't originally list Sampha on Spotify, like, alongside Drake's name under the song name. Mm-hmm. That Then when I listened to Father Time on the Kendrick album, I was like, holy shit, Chef is fucking sick. Um, and then I went back and was uh, like, would, wait, it's the same guy. It would have been too much, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that Drake song is the the first that most people heard from him. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's just fucking gorgeous, gorgeous album. That's pretty much it. Um, uh, did, did Mark, did you get a chance to listen to it? or I... Quite literally, I was going to listen to this tomorrow. I didn't. Re- I didn't look to see that this was on somebody's list. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm excited to listen to it. I mean, I've only heard Sampa in samples so far, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure that that's not an. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, features, and I don't think that's an uncommon thing mm-hmm. for for most people for him. But I'm excited to to see to see what this album's about. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think if he has one more album or if he has two. He, this is his second full-length album. His last uh, album was in 2017. 2017, yeah. That one is also just amazing. So, like, you know, wherever you... Basically, wherever Sampa is, it's 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 going to be a good time. Um, Absolutely. Would recommend and totally deserves a spot on these lists. Um. But yeah. Uh, all right, Kobe. What is your number two album of the year? Yeah. So this album, uh, you know, the writing was on the wall with this artist when last year he appeared on a Tame Impala remix, and no one really caught on to what this man was doing. But my number two pick is Lil Yachty's "Let's Start Here." Let's start mm. here. And this is where Lil Yachty decided to venture into psychedelic rock. And it showed some strong influences from Pink Floyd to Tame Impala, obviously. And holy crap, this album is honestly so beautiful to listen to. I did not expect this coming from Lil Yachty. I don't think anyone did, but he really just decided to change genres and he fucking hit it out of the park. I Every time I listen to this album, I start to like it even more and more. Uh, at first, like first go around with this album, I was a little like, taken aback because i didn't know what to really think about it but as you just hear his experimentation it just this mo this album is just so beautiful and when it has its moments of restraint and simplicity and it draws comparisons to other artists like childish gambino and prince it's very much a step towards a more refined song craft from yadi himself and I like how he is exploring new musical directions. I think this is like the sum of his work over the past five studio albums that he has uh, released. Yeah, I, I think I was I wanted to make a note about this just in in general with a lot of these um, hip hop and, and rap artists starting to do more rock experimentation. Like even if they're still by and large rock albums, um, or sorry, hip hop or, or rap albums. Um, it feels like I'm starting to see more, like, you know, rock instrumentation and influences coming into a lot of these newer albums, which I'm all for. I fucking love me some, some good rock influences alongside this amazing hip-hop stuff. I mean, um, we'll But this is, this is like a, a full very... psychedelic rock yeah. album, for sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking about another artist soon. I think it was on Mark's top three of someone who decided to venture into rock as well. And whether, like, how these two albums compare in terms of artists taking their craft and going into a completely direction new direction but i'm curious to hear what everyone else had to say about this album because i was just honestly blown away by what lil yachty was able to craft mm-hmm. for, oh for yeah me, this is was, for me it's certainly the most interesting lil yachty's ever been <laughs> i can say that much for, for me at least mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm not, I was never like a lil yachty like hater exactly but i, I just I never like found it. myself interested in his like <laughs> kind of brand of music i liked about features and stuff like god i love broccoli that that song was good <laughs> but like and like he just always he had a very specific style of like kind of like who who gives a shit fun music that i he got a, i mean like a, a, he he got so much shit lil yachty has gotten like over the years like 
so much shit for just kind of being himself and having fun. Like, it's so stupid, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and then he comes out with this, which is kind of, I think, just an extension of him, you know, doing fun things because he can. And, and yeah. it's, and it worked. Good. It's, yeah. it's great. Like, it's not my favorite psych rock record, uh, but you can, like, tell that he really loves. He, he really cares about like the genre and like the the his the influences that he's you know that he's referencing and and is inspired by like he's, mm-hmm. he 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 did this with with a lot of care. Yeah, comes through. Um, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm not the biggest psych rock person myself, but like this was a vibe from front to back that I could enjoy, like you know, put on the background and, and vibing out with. Um, well, no notes it- really. It's a very cheesy thing to say, but I think this album is going to age like a fine wine. I think we're going to start to appreciate what is here as time goes on. Because like I said, every time I listen through this, I think it gets better. And I start to pick up on a little bit more of the nuances that he has on this. And just really kind of honoring, like I said, the Tame Impala, Pink Floyd. And like seeing that Lil Yachty is able to handle a full like uh, band behind him is very interesting to see and how he was able to to conjure this yeah i i i mean i love this album it's amazing i would have uh i i've been getting into a lot of like um i've been kind of i've listened to a lot of lil yachty before i always love lil yachty style i love the uh the bit of um uh the bit of uh is it I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it wrong. Uh, I think it's a uh, drill that he was getting into for a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. I love that. Um, uh, oh no, like the yeah, like the Detroit. Uh, he was getting into like the Detroit style rapping for a little bit. I love that. Um, I love how he's kind of going around and trying a whole bunch of different stuff. And I I think it's all working for me. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. All right, and um, moving on to you, Mark. What's your number two album of the year? All right, uh, my number two album of the year, as a um, uh, is Utopia. Um, I this album is special to me because I I think the first time that I heard Telekinesis in. Uh, the first time I had ever heard it was because I had listened to a lot of Kanye leaks. So I know <laughs> where that song come, came from. And I love that song. I was I was never expecting it to come out, as you do with a lot of Kanye leaks. Um, and I'm really glad that it ended up here. It felt... Uh, the first time I ever listened to the album was with Kobe in the theater for, Circus the, Maximus. Uh, for Circus Maximus. And it was so fun i had yeah. such a great time with that and then coming to get to hear this album come together this i it doesn't feel like a travis scott album but it does feel like a kanye album which is <laughs> kind of why i like it a little bit more uh it's uh, there's some things that i there's some parts of it that i don't like of it there's like two tracks i think that i really dislike uh i dislike k-pop a lot <laughs> but that's just that felt weird. So, I don't know why that's there. Um, and um, I, I think it's uh, it's Topia Twins. I don't like that song either. I think it's stupid. But um, uh, it's uh, Twin K-pop. Bitches on a Jet Ski uh, and K-pop. Mm. Right, but yeah. th- I don't know. This album just feel it feels like a very heavily uh, very heavily Kanye inspired album. Uh, but it gets to i i feel like it it thrives it's really it's really fun to hear all the different parts uh, i think that when he tries to get too like deep in thought on on the album particularly like in paracel it just feels weird because that's not i don't think travis scott is one good at that and two uh i don't respect him enough like in that what? in that lane of thinking to listen to what he has to say about it. What the fuck is um, Dave Chappelle here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. But 
I mean, it, it's just it's just a great album. I love it. I love hearing God's Country. Uh, I was uh, I just love all of it. It's really fun. Is that Besides another? The I said I hate it. Is that another yeah, Kanye like, leak or God's Country? Yeah, that sounds like, like something. Kanye leak album that ended mm-hmm. up being like professionally done, which I'm so, happy. With. Utopia is probably like my like despite despite like the the three picks that I brought to this podcast. Utopia is probably like my actual number one uh, t- tied number one album of the year. Mm-hmm. Utopia, I think, is an incredible album, but much like last year with my number one, which was Mr. Morale, like there are issues that linger throughout this album that are kind of hard to ignore in some mm-hmm. of the tracks, especially with like the messaging that he is giving. It's hard to ignore the the context of Kanye and how Travis has responded to Kanye. Like, I, I understand why he has, but it's very hard to ignore it given the, the grand scheme of things. And that that is, you can feel that throughout the album. Also, as Dylan said earlier, why the fuck is Dave Chappelle here? <laughs> like, there are some, there are a few things that like some I choices being with. made. Yeah, this like very similar issues I had during the Mr. Morale, even though I still adore that album. I fucking adore Utopia. I think pretty I don't mind Utopia Twins. Every time I'm in the gym listening to it, it is the funniest song to get a lift to of just hearing twin bitches in the jet ski just screaming in my headphones. It's so funny. I do actively skip K-pop. I think that is and just one of the weirdest that song does not belong here that song belonged on the bad bunny album that is like it 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 just feels so out of place with the rest of the theming that goes into this album i think travis starts to step up his lyric game just a little bit in this one um not by much but i think where this album really shines is him being held up by the features even like I'll go over a couple, but even though I'm not, I've been very vocal against Drake, especially in his later <laughs> uh, albums. This Drake feature does go incredibly hard. I think it's one of his best outings in quite some tea time. Tea time, tea time, tea time. <laughs> it's so good. Tel- Telekinesis is one of the most beautiful tracks I have heard all year, and that SZA feature literally that rewired my brain chemistry. I, <laughs> that is like the most beautiful. It went crazy in the theater. Okay, okay it, but then it, I. It, I feel like when the future hit the breaker, <laughs> <laughs> but nah, just, I loved it. It, I think Telekinesis is the perfect song on this album. I just can't stop listening to it. Also, Tizo Touchdown coming with it on Modern Jam is just so excellent to listen to. Like this song, this not song, this whole album is just elevated by the fucking uh, features. Even Playboy Cardi being a little freak like he. Is. Fiend. So Fiend. no, that's good. Fiend. I love the clips I get of him playing Fiend like seven times at a concert. Dude, dude, at the last concert in New York, he played it like sixteen times. I would have lost my mind sure. by that point. Like Bro, the same played it song. Sixteen times and then canceled hours. Uh, hours. Like, <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't like playing it in a row. He was like playing no, it and then like, like. I feel like he'd, he'd cut to it. He like cut yeah. to it. He wouldn't like play the whole thing. I think, but smash like, cut to feed. Yeah. It kind of actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes to get the genius parts, you gotta you gotta just go through the weird ones. And I, I, there's no uh, no person that reminds me of that when you when when I say that. But it's you just gotta go through a lot of weird shit to get some great stuff. And I think that's what, um, that's what a lot of these artists do. It it always throws me off whenever Play I hear it. Right. It always throws me off when I hear James Blake appear in one of these songs, but James Blake, like, until further notice, is honestly so good. He's he's definitely a good artist. Just like, I love oh, James yeah. Blake. He's very good. We love he James Blake. Show, he, he just really kind of shows up, I feel like. Yeah, that's why I like... It, it just like throws me off when he shows up because he just comes out of nowhere, drops a, a hot feature, and leaves. <laughs> I'm like, where are you going? Where are you going? Come back. Make an album. Uh, but but uh, back here. Uh, Murky and Dylan, what did you guys think of uh, of uh, Utopia? I uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I just I don't have that many thoughts on it. I don't think it was. <clears throat> I, I wouldn't put it as high as, as y'all are. Like, I did enjoy a majority of the tracks. I, 
I have saved K-pop, but I think that's because I'm a sucker for the weekend, so that probably elevated it above. Listen, I'm a sucker. Mark, I'm not I'm not saying Mark's a even more of a sucker for the weekend. I'm but... not that big of a sucker. For the <laughs> something, something about the weekend's feature specifically, like, didn't impress me that much on the track. Like, mm-hmm. I enjoyed mostly listening to to Bad Bunny and and, and Travis, like, on, on, you know, just like going at it, but like. Yeah. Uh, I, I I like the track. I might maybe agree that it was maybe out of place, but I didn't really feel like a strong sense of like unity or like it was, the album didn't feel like super cohesive necessarily. It was kind of just oh, like no. Travis Scott playing around. So like it didn't. I didn't think it felt like out of place exactly. Just I don't know. Maybe odd. Uh, I was serious about like telekinesis though, where like that is that is like a great song. But something about Future's part, like, I just want to skip it. Like, if there's a version without fucking Future, in it, <laughs> I, would, I would I'd have that song pretty high up in my listens. But, like... I like it a lot. I, like, I think really Future's Future verse just like, flows really well on it. I feel like he's just kind of, like, talking at me. And I just, like... What? I feel like I'm that's being lectured does. at. I feel like I'm being but, lectured at. But that's, like, <laughs> the vibe of the song. Like, I feel like if Future came with more of an upbeat tempo, it just wouldn't work. Well, I just need to... I be, think like, it makes the SZA feature pop well, more. It, like, it's almost, like, too... He's he's almost, like, just speaking too much. Like, I feel like he should kind of just, like, slow down and flow with it a little more. But instead, he's just kind of, like... I don't know. Going he's going like too talking. fast. He's just kind of talking. He's just kind of, like... Yeah, it's, like, kind of lecture almost. Mm. Like, in tone. So it's like I I have a weird feeling about this. Dylan said Future's I, having a yap session. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying, but uh yeah no the production on this album is crazy. It's it's interesting because I never really felt a lot of the Kanye influence. I mean tele uh, telekinesis definitely like I feel it there like as a, as that song like goes on, but I feel like God Country, too. Uh. God's, I mean, country, that, God's country sounds like yeah. a track. That's for sure. That's for a sure. that's a that's a Kanye. He's had that for a while. <laughs> he yeah. was, he, that's been his for forever. Or, or God's sorry, God's country is the one that sounds like he's. I do agree that it sounds like Kanye, but fucking modern jam just sounds like a cut off Jesus. I love it. Which is like, I mean, I I will use I'm a Jesus enjoyer, um, <laughs> Jesus defender, mm-hmm. uh, but. I felt like I, I didn't like think about the album so much as like being like, a Kanye inspired album. I just felt like, you know, this is this is Travis Scott with Travis Scott money have being able to employ some of the the biggest like producers in the game, right? Like I definitely felt like Metro Metro Boomin's definitely somewhere like on here. So Metro Boomin stuff is like you, you keep bringing up the the Kanye influence and like tracks from Kanye's vault. Like, is he credited on this album or yes? He is okay. he's produced co produced Gotcha. All right. This, he's the co producer of this album. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel like so many of the beats through littered throughout this album are so Kanye inspired. Like when I listen to this and then listen through Kanye's discography, I I if you just remove Travis's voice like and replace it with Kanye, I could see this just being one of Kanye's <laughs> albums. Yeah, but I, he's I there's not enough rapping about uh being a reformed anti Semite to so that's that's the giveaway that it's not it's not Kanye's album. He, I think the reason why that feels like that, and let me make sure. Uh, yeah, he it's because Mike Dean. It's because of Mike Dean. Yeah. I think that um I get it sucks that Kanye has treated Mike Dean the way he has in the way that Mike Dean's not really going to work with him anymore. But it, I think Mike Dean works magic. At least and Travis didn't lock Mike Dean in a room this time. What he the did fuck? not trap him in the Superdome this time. What the fuck? I, every day I learn something new about Kanye yeah, that just makes me go with Kanye uh, locked Mike Dean in a fucking like. Room I don't know who Mike Dean the- is. I guess he's another producer. He's a- very famous. He's he's okay. one of the most famous producers and audio engineers in the entire hip hop industry. He is the man. And Kanye locked him in a room. He's that guy. Uh, well, so what was happening? You remember when Kanye was doing the um, uh, the uh, was it the listening parties? The the Donda or, listening parties. Uh, yeah, like the, the live shows uh, with the giant. One House, of those, or... he was working in he was he was working on the album like live and he was like we don't have enough time uh we don't have enough time we're gonna work until it's finished and so he locked everybody down inside the 
um, inside the football stadium. It would not let them leave until they got the album done. What? And the so after fuck? that, like after that, Mike Dean was like, "I'm done with this shit. I'm so like I I wanted to go home. Yeah, I'm tired of this shit. Uh, Jesus Christ. So that, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, that is um. That's the Kanye we have now, I guess. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> the Kanye got us. We've always had. This is not. This is no different. This is this is what it's always been. It's just been more publicized. Yeah, it's the the fame yeah. brought it brought the He's antics even higher. Shit. Yeah, there, there's there's a there's a lot on here that isn't just Kanye. I feel like like that the last song is like that's that's a Petro Boomin song for sure. Uh, the fucking Kid Cudi track like that's. Um, Love me some pretty sure that's pretty sure that's that's like fucking Pharrell, uh, mm. and then the West Side Gun track. I'm pretty sure that like that's an Alchemist beat, um, and then fun fact, I'm pretty sure Modern Jam has your boy Guy Man actually is hey, yo? one of the producers on there from yeah, which is interesting to me uh, that I f- figured that Kanye would have a bigger influence on that one because it sounds so much like Jesus, but at the same time Kanye hasn't really gone back to that Jesus sound. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Oh, damn, that was that was one of the ones I didn't save from the album. And that had Tizo, which when I listened to the Tizo album, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, I really liked that Tizo album. But I, I did not. Yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> are you not? Take he- and then you, everyone knows when Take Heath is is producing. He doesn't let you not know. <laughs> Take Heath this song. Oh my god, fucking my okay. My favorite song off this album, which is like. I remember, I remember watching the fucking Fantano review for Utopia and 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 cursing him out for this one because he didn't. He said he didn't really like Del Resto, and <laughs> I thought Beyonce was. This is one of the best Beyonce features. I've I remember ever. that Beyonce God feature. Yeah, mm-hmm. that song goes so fucking crazy. That was really yeah. good. Um, Jesus Christ! I think, I think like I think like I I was like lying down on my bed. I just had my fucking <laughs> AirPods in, noise canceling. I was lying down, and I think I started crying. It was so good. Oh, my yeah, God. I was like, is that fucking? That's fucking Beyonce. <laughs> that's fucking oh Beyonce. Beyonce. And it's Beyonce going insane. I I will say this much before we move away from this. It like even though this isn't a movie discussion, if anyone gets the chance to watch Circus Maximus, like if you can find that online, like throw it on like a good like speaker or- It's on Apple home. Music. Uh, I think it might also be on YouTube as as well. Uh, Circus Maximus was one of the coolest ways to hear this album debut. Uh, like the, the movie is split into two segments. It is split into like this- psychedelic journey of travis like trying to like assemble the sounds of utopia and like going to different parts of the world and like reflecting on his career like it was a very somber piece for the first 20 minutes gets a little bit hentai-ish but that's for you guys to see wait no Um, hold on what do you mean by that huh (laughs) travis gets there's a big squid that like goes it's weird but okay uh, take your word for it interesting he doesn't know last... about the hentai i don't <laughs> know last... about the hentai the last 45 minutes of the movie is him just having fun at the oh where where the fuck was it mark in italy was it the is the oh. isn't it circus maximus it might it might circus, be circus maximus was a thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just them like on location performing the album and having like the live features come through Wow. It I, is. I think so I put cool. a hole through Paige's arm when I was elbowing her. I was like, that, I was like, this is who this is. That's who that is. I was like, that's Tizo. That's Kanye. It, I know how they walk. It's, it's, it's a, it's I'm pointing movie. and pogging. In in the year of a lot of concert movies that came out, like I know Eras Tour was a thing. The Renaissance movie came out. I think Circus Maximus was the most unique, mm-hmm. just with how because. Tra- Travis went and also fucking assembled like re- like a lot of directors that are famous. Like he even got the guy who directed the movie Drive to make parts of this movie. It's fucking weird, but the he's movie literally really me. Sucks, right? He's literally <laughs> me. The, the the part where they start driving around, Dylan, you will hate because that is the- <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ah, fucking yeah. fucking Akira, but with Ryan Gosling. Ah, get out of my head. <laughs> It's an hour and fifteen minutes. I really highly recommend going experiencing this album through the movie as well. And that's for that's for Utopia, or is that for yeah, a different for, for Utopia? For cool. Utopia. Yeah. Um, all right. 
Now, now for the final round of uh, our number one picks for album of the year. Uh, this one was probably the easiest of the three for me to pick. Um, I wouldn't say it won by a country mile, but pretty damn close to a country mile because god damn, this fucking shit was so good and I know a lot of y'all probably also had this on your list and had to bump it around for other stuff so we had unique picks, but uh, It's Scaring the Hose by JPEG and Danny Brown. Fucking magnifico. I, like, I think as I was trying to figure out what my albums of the year were, um, alongside picking, like, the best finds for my songs of the years, uh, of, of 2023. Like, I definitely put an excise importance on just hearing things I've never heard before, or hearing things in new ways, you know, that, that like, I've just, has never been delivered to me in, in the way that, like, whatever the album is has delivered it. And I have never heard anything like what this fucking album is delivering and it sounds again in in a kind of like it's it's much more cohesive i would say than than how like even you know but Ten Thousand gex has a flow but it's kind of all over the place at the same time this is also kind of all over the place but it is like you know you listen to any sound any song on this album and it is like a vibe that um is consistent but is delivered in different ways on like pretty much every single track and it just keeps going and going and going and like i'm, I'm like enraptured when i when i'm listening to it every choice that they're making on the production um and the lyrics are fucking hilarious i think i ended up picking god loves you as my like number one pick from it um what was it uh fucking Pussy on my face, I'm a talking tongues. Like, just started doing, like, biblical references and shit uh, around that. It was so, just so many bangers like that. And, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I don't even think that I can properly put it words. like, song names. Oh, oh yeah. Name. Fucking, I remember when it came out. Um, I think I, I started, <laughs> I started listening to it because, uh, Dylan, you asked me, or somebody asked me, if, uh, Kingdom Hearts Keys or Kingdom Hearts Key was sampling like the fucking I did ask you um that, yeah. yeah the fucking uh simple anything and clean Hearts, or anything from Kingdom Hearts I don't think it is but it's still it's not, like it's not. yeah it just sounds like crazy from front to back and they're doing wild shit on on tuning the sounds that they're using to make them like it's it's a lot of harsh noise in being incorporated into it um but it works with the like this. The, the beats are fucking rocking you from from second one um and yeah i I've, I'll, I'll let you guys talk about it some more because i know most of y'all i don't mark have you you listened to it right i, I know the other two have but um yeah i've, I've listened to it uh, uh, i don't think i like it as much as other people like it mm, so no. yeah i mean this was tied for my number one of the utopia mm. um just what an incredible funny album like this was the most fun i've had all year listening to something mm -hmm. and i go back to it consistently and it's just such a joyous time and just it's just jpeg mafia and danny brown having the time of their life and that comes through and mm -hmm. then i in turn also have the time of my life listening to this thing <laughs> yeah i I became a Jacob Mafia fan in 2019, and I have not stopped fucking eating, dude. I can honestly <laughs> think that JPEG Mafia might be just like he's. I feel like he's a once in a lifetime kind of fucking producer, man. He's insane. He's fucking. He's just fucking insane. Most of his <laughs> album was 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 produced um, on like a fucking a Roland SP404. This tiny little sampler. That's like barely, barely a production tool. Um, huh? And then, yeah. Um, and like, J J Pe Peggy and Danny are just some of the. I think they're they're the some of the funniest for sure, but some of the just like legitimately like most gifted fucking rappers we have around. <laughs> um, their yeah. their wit is is really great. Their fucking their flows can go fucking hard it's like danny brown is like danny brown does his like silly little voice but then also like 
D- Danny Brown has his like iconic, you know, nasally Danny Brown voice. Um, yeah, and he still manages to like bring a lot of energy with it. And then Peggy, Peggy is so good at fucking yelling at you. <laughs> Peggy <laughs> is so good at just being angry. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah, you talked about the the nasally voice that Danny Brown's got. Like, I'm surprised I'm not put off by that in the way that I'm put off by fucking <laughs> little way. Like, it, it seems like it should tick the same boxes of not just not being up my alley but like i don't know i i just it goes well enough with the flow that i'm just i'm i'm in i'm in for it all it it all fucking goes so hard in that um but yeah sampling the sampling is fucking insane the the japanese meat commercial sampling (laughs) uh, (laughs) like the gang is like Mm -hmm. nobody nobody (laughs) thinks to do shit like fucking and then make (laughs) albums of this caliber that are like full of energy full of this like just just strong like i wouldn't say that the album has like a core message or anything but it's so much an album that exists in service of itself as this as the statement against like what is popular and like what gets what what gets what gets to be popular and how how they can exist completely outside of like what what is what is deemed like suitable for like public play Mm -hmm. um yeah what what will and will not scare the hose this would this would scare the hose you put this on it'll scare the hose but it goes fucking hard (laughs) it's just so fucking funny say that she's got them touching their toes we don't want to hear that weird shit no more it's like fuck i so good i just i just I I hope we get a few more years of music out of these guys. I hope I I hope they could make music until they're fucking like old men, <laughs> just fucking. Until one just walks up to the on rocking chairs. <laughs> until one walks up to the other in the middle of a desert and fucking blows them up. <laughs> <laughs> just getting angry at people on Twitter. <laughs> 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 fucking going. Oh my god. So Mark, I, I am I am curious, Mark. Like you just weren't vibing with the sound of it, or like what? I I feel like I should really like this album. I feel like I I should like technically it feels really like they did something crazy. Mm-hmm. I just I don't know. Like it's not. I'm not. I know that it's good in my head. I know that it's good. <laughs> but if I'm like, am I having fun listening to this? My answer ends up being no. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I, I wish, I wish I did. I really. <laughs> no, I get I it. It's it. just different, but different strokes for different folks. Sometimes yeah, just it just not, doesn't I'm hit. Just not having fun with it. Yeah. Maybe one day I will. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll hit. <laughs> Grow on you some, after some we throw it on for the fifteen it's, millionth time. Noisy. It's grimy. It's beautiful. I feel like it's just a thing that's hard to absorb if it you're not. Feels corny. Part to me I, I don't know why but every time i listen to like a i don't for some reason jpeg mafia feels corny to me even though i know that he's not so i it just it i think it just i think it's a fair criticism like it's i mean if you're not vibing with it like i think that's i think that's a fair thing to say it's not fair to but, him for me to call him corny though like he's just doing well, what I mean, comes he, naturally I mean, to him I mean, I'm, you can definitely just, find him corny. I understand that, but I think we're all in agreement that this album is like technically insane. It's got, oh, yeah. it's got something. Amazing. There's, they're cooking. They're cooking something with this album, to be sure. Um, but yeah, uh, that's my number one pick. Uh, Dylan, what do you got? Man, yeah. So my number one of the year was definitely Scaring the Hose, but uh, in 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 light of that being picked already, uh, my my next pick is. Is uh, ugly by a slow tie. This album is fucking rocks, dude. Uh, I don't know if Mark, did you get a chance to listen to it? Uh, uh this is one that I listened to part of the way, but I did not get to finish. Did not finish it. Okay. Nope. Um, I think that this album is super raw and emotional, and it was really funny, like. I was part of the 
you know, as I was like catching up on uh, albums for the years, I mentioned the Mitski album, and that album like left me feel like kind of cr- crushed a little. Like that 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 album has a lot of like I don't know, pretty. I'd say pretty like emotionally dr- like draining almost, but like emotionally like very taxing like music on there. Um, mm. And ugly, I, I I was like I have to re-listen to some albums, so I have things to talk about. And I listened to Ugly immediately <clears throat> after because I was like I feel like I might die right now <laughs> if I if I don't listen to something <laughs> to like to like change things up. Uh, mm-hmm. And like I couldn't help but like I don't know. Part of me was at, at some point in my brain I was like these albums are the same in in a, in a way. Like obviously they're very different, like differently constructed albums. Mm. It's not a fucking you know folk folk ballad album at all uh, but it's like this this album is like very largely about sotai's mental health and dealing with um it's 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 just like a very personal album like it's i i don't know if i could really say like it deals with you know this in particular when it's he he talks you know about uh, mostly just being in a in a pretty bad mental state in general throughout this album, mm-hmm. um, and in that kind of way, I felt like that kind of acceptance of like and and dealing of us with of a somber existence between ugly and Missy's like um, the land is inhospitable. They they felt actually kind of kin to each other, which is maybe an insane take, and maybe I was just <laughs> incredibly emotionally. <laughs> uh, strained at that moment but mm-hmm. like um you said they're kinfolk album, and skinfolk i mean is i don't think i don't think uh tyron is japanese and i don't think miski is barbadian so they <laughs> like in heart yeah <laughs> skinfolk in heart <laughs> something like that i don't know what kind of drugs miski has done <laughs> but uh yeah no the, and the the we, we, we've talked a bit about, and we're going to continue to talk about, like, I guess specifically rappers who, who take more, like, instrumental liberties with their music. That definitely has happened on, on Ugly. Because, like, Slow Ties, probably his most well-known album is still uh, Nothing Great About Britain, which is definitely, like, deeply, deeply, you know, in the, in the UK grime <coughs> kind of, like, style. Mm-hmm. Or, like, has a lot of influence from there. But comparatively, this has, like, very a really wide array of meaning like it starts off with like industrial sounding like hip-hop something that like something that is akin to like that like uh kind of like fucking uh the, the like early like 90s like electronic like what, what do you call something like something like the prodigy or like fucking um Chemical Brothers, almost. Oh, it's kind of like yeah. late nineties. Um, you know, super super basty industrial like hip hop, like hip hop track. Yeah, noisy. Uh, and then it immediately goes into like a, like a like a post punk sounding track with like these like again kind of like like oh, I don't know haunting evil sounding like guitar. Yeah, evil core. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. um. Um, and it's very like uh, it's like super aggressive like like mental introspection and then it Im- immediately goes into like a that kind of like, so, like sardonic like indie indie rock almost uh and yeah. then almost like almost like indie pop like right after that and mm. then and then it's and then and then like a rap ballad and then like the closest thing to like an actual hip hop track on the entire album, like he 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 doesn't he he switches between sounds so often, um, but it all connects. The entire, it's a it's a journey. Yeah, the entire, each piece connects to the next. Well, yeah, it feels it feels like a very, <laughs> I I think it feels like a very understandable, relatable, like you know, set of experiences dealing with your mental illness and like the way it affects the way you see the world and yourself and and like how it affects your like relationships with with other people um so i don't know what i might say my favorite track is off this album they're all like really good it's probably actually 
Never Again, that ballad. Um, yeah, I think it's actually, it's like a super beautiful song and it has this build up to, it, it, it's, it's, it's one of the songs that like tells like a more specific like story and the ending of that story. Like, I feel like this is rap that should like, <laughs> you know, like Mark was talking about JPEG Mark Mafia, like somehow sounding corny, even though like the rest of us, I guess, don't really feel that way. I feel like this album the the kind of stuff that this album talks about and some of the, the lyrics and, and some, some of the lyrics that appear in this album. I wonder if this is what Hobo Johnson thinks he's doing when he's <laughs> up, like, doing his, his, his poetry, basically. <laughs> and some, like, it's something about... Yeah, I like I feel you fucking said that. <laughs> like, I feel like... I feel like Slow Tie is actually delivering on telling something kind of detailed but like emotionally impactful and mm -hmm. and beautiful um and 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 the rest of the album mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot of it's just it it feels so earnestly emotional and ranging from happy to despondent like i i love listening to this album and everywhere it goes mm -hmm. well yeah i this one was another completely new album to me when i heard it but i love the the way it went through, like you're talking about, I fucking, I, I made another new hyper specific playlist on my account called Sound the Alarm, which is just songs that have like something that sounds akin to or just is like an emergency alarm ringing in the background and fucking Tourniquet made me do that because I was like, this <laughs> is now the third song I've heard that has this very prominent like piece of the track that sounds like an alarm going off but it works and it's like it plays into the the whole story they're telling about you know the state of their mental health and being on edge and stuff like that and um yeah i, I really enjoyed it tourniquet's another track that i feel like hobo johnson would fail to deliver on <laughs> like it's it's very much listen like, i am a peach cone i'm a peach cones apologist all right i, I do not think, think hobo johnson could make you by kendrick lamar i agree Ho Hobo Johnson fails to deliver on everything he tries to put out. I so. like I like Peach Scones. I liked Peach Scones. I might oh be the God. only one okay, left. The entire so podcast like that we're friends with you. That says a lot about us. <laughs> for, for the entire rest of this podcast, let's all talk like Hobo Johnson's song. Oh my God! I really thought like this album was insanely good. Oh my God! I was like, shut up. <laughs> but it's like it's like that's the thing. It's like Turniquet. Turniquet is like kind of like in in and of itself like this song where where like so Dai is like just kind of yelling and kind of being in his feelings but he actually delivers like a lot of impactful stuff yeah song. um this, and I, the, music, like the, musical, the musical interlude <laughs> is nice mm -hmm. um, i got i got i got two points i, I listened to this just uh, before this podcast started i need to listen to it again i it's it's an album where I came away with like I don't know if I like it or dislike it right now. I think it the context behind it is very interesting. I think it's powerful in terms of the storytelling, but I need to I need to give this another listen. Um, yeah, but I I understand why it's like very high on someone's list. Mm -hmm. uh, a second point. Now I got I think about Hobo Johnson. That's... That fucking Tiny Desk concert made me so upset. That shit is so funny. If you haven't looked at the Hobo Johnson, I haven't seen that yet. Concert, I can't finish it. Like I, I started, it. it's like I get like two minutes in. It's like I can't. I can't. Oh, the, the no. guy, like, Hobo it's Johnson. The no, Hobo. I will just give a TLDR. Hobo Johnson will do his like poetry slam where he's just talking, and then, like I swear halfway through the song he'll just go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is he just like oh Hobo no Johnson is the most incel shit i've ever heard in my life he every is, lyric he... i've ever heard yeah. this motherfucker spit has sounded like it has come out the voice <laughs> of out of the mouth of an incel yeah i can i could see that i i like the stuff that i was introduced to <laughs> but i i remember i remember that was when i was starting to get more into like watching Pantana videos and stuff and then he put out like that whatever after his first dp is like next actual album and apparently that was just so fucking dog water that like any potential he had was just thrown in the garbage or whatever it was just like oh well all right i don't know but i could definitely see like the veneer of like the sad 
uh, you know, the sad boy who's like shy, but he's not, he's not really, he's just, it feels performative. Like that's, that's what Hobo Johnson sounds like. Yeah, it's, it feels <laughs> malicious. I can it see that. It feels like I, uh, it feels End like, game hey guys, music. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling everybody, I'm, I'm telling the girls I'm gay so I can go to the sleepover. But that's what it feels no, like. No, 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 no. That's no. what it does. It, it, that's what it feels like to me. That's uh, why I don't like it. I'm like, the vibes are putrid. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is I need, it, to, so I need I you to imagine a drake and josh a hypothetical drake and josh episode <laughs> where they have to enter a, where they're entering a poetry slam and drake <laughs> is doing it to impress a girl like just to get in some girl's pants and, and josh is basically doing the same thing just being josh about it josh is doing the hobo johnson scene, <laughs> and then drake is coming in sing, singing fucking uh was it thick girls from from collar grove <laughs> <laughs> that is an incredible imaginary scenario thing, to think thing. of. Oh that's that's how I feel about Hobo Johnson. <laughs> Hobo Johnson is, is Josh. Oh yeah. no! All right, uh, all right, Kobe. What is your number one pick? <clears throat> yeah, uh, my number one pick. I feel like is going to be a little tricky to talk about because it directly coincides with the movie and all the samples in this. Are this was your oh like, fuck! This was your number one. Holy and, shit! And it, and it is a lot show. of di- <laughs> It was a lot, lot of dialogue spoken from the movie. But I am picking Metro Boom. Like Utopia was definitely my number one, but for this, uh, this was pretty high up on my list. Uh, Metro Boom presents Spider Man across the Spider Verse. I think Crazy. this album. In terms of, like, when we look at both Spider-Verse movies and the albums that were put forth uh, by both movies, I think this one really just hits the nail on the head. And I absolutely loved every track on this. I think where this this guy likes Nav. This guy likes Nav. (laughs) I think where this album gets tricky to talk about is if you go, like... This album, like, coincides so well with the Spider-Man movie that, like, I listened to this after I saw the movie and the tracks just so flow so well together because it's it is pairing well with the story that that is the movie. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love all of the features on this album. I think Metro Boomin does a hell of a job producing this. And there are songs on here that I think are just downright gorgeous to listen to. Two of them being Hummingbird and Self Love. I think those are insane to listen to. But not just the that. Slide down the track was not what I had on my was, fucking was bingo the, card. What was the one that wasn't? Sorry, what was the one, other one from the Hummingbird? Uh, uh, Hummingbird and self love. Self love. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that also danger uh, with Jid is also an incredible song. Like I can't like I think every song on here is so Spider. damn good. I think Spider. where people get hung up Spider. on this album <laughs> is the the samples of dialogue yeah, that, we... that pops up. And that's where this gets a little bit tricky, but I feel like as like a whole package, it is just awesome to listen to. That was, mm-hmm. we, we we talked to we were talking with Lul in in the other server before hopping over here, um, about you picking this album. Um and Honestly, I think it. I think it's kind of weaker than Into the Spider Verse's album, just because it feels like it is so tied to the movie, and especially and the and the voice samples being on every on, on a lot of the tracks, like is just hammering that in even more. So, like, I don't feel like this movie has a fucking what's up danger it doesn't have a sunflower it doesn't have you know anything that really <laughs> I, stands I out to me needs. like that i don't i don't know i don't know, I don't know if it needed it either like i i guess that that might not be for, the best point to make story, but like like i think this is where it gets tricky but for the story that across the spider verse was portraying this album is perfect for that movie yeah that, i just that, don't that, that, see that myself different. listening to it on its own i guess it's, it's the thing like, that, what's that up, we were danger? kind of talking about yeah like I listen to those songs just randomly on shuffle, and I don't feel like these songs. I I I did love this album too. I just like I want to just go through the whole thing and just pseudo experience the movie again, kind of when I listen to this album. This um, this was my most listened to album of the year. I mean, Utopia was right behind it, but I listened to Across the Spider Verse a total of thirty eight times. I thought this was just immaculate. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It is a great album. I, I I love it. 
It's amazing. I love Metro Boomin so much. Everything Metro Boomin touches is going great right now. He's doing such an amazing job as a producer. And I think that it like going for it, like every, every track that I hear makes me more excited for what I think will definitely be my album of the year next year. Uh, the GID and Metro Boomin collaboration, collaboration album. If it's not next year, something has gone terribly wrong. <laughs> Uh, the world is in Kanye turmoil. West. I I am I'm in I'm in a bunker, scared to scared to speak, because <laughs> what I'll end up saying is it's gonna be in the base now. It's gonna be great. But I mean, this album as a follow up to Heroes and Villains, I think was a worthy enough follow up. Like it, this album evoked the same feeling as I got from Heroes and Villains, and I think that that's that should be a statement in itself because Heroes and Villains, I think, is an immaculate album as well. <clears throat> I uh, I I I have I have thoughts about like this and the the Into the Spider Verse album. Just like I don't think I agree with I I I agree with that. There are definitely tracks off both these albums that are like good in a vacuum, but I still feel like in both cases, like this one, like for for this movie and the last one, these soundtracks cannot really be removed from their movies mm -hmm. like i don't really enjoy listening i don't really enjoy the songs in and of themselves without like movie context or honestly for some of them without the actual movie going on like a lot of the tracks just i feel like a lot of the tracks exist as soundtracks like soundtrack pieces where like they're, <clears throat> they need to accompany something else to be to be fully realized I do agree that like self love is a fantastic track. Um, maybe I think that the first, in, like first into the Spider Verse album was like a little little easier to like listen to because of yeah there are there are movie dialogue bits at the end of each song. But like in in general, I didn't feel like either of those albums are like albums that I sit down and kind of like listen to in and out of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, even like like I loved Hummingbird in the context of the movie. When I listened to it on its own, I just it felt a little it felt a little empty. It felt like I was missing something. I felt like I was missing the context for it, and like I was because I, I I mean I I'd seen what goes on in the movie, but like <laughs> that's not present during the song. It makes the song feel a little less good. I do like that, you know. Da I do like Danger with uh, with Spider uh, off that and Jid. Spider. Spider. Like I like it because I mean I like it mostly because Jid is there to be Jid. He's just kind of he just kind of gets to be Jid on that. Mm -hmm. on that song which is like i always love when he, he gets to do that maybe it's 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 not even jid's like best best feature definitely by far but like it's still great because he's a fucking talent um, yeah but he's insane offset 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 is offset is just i mean he's too fun he 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 loops around to just being funny as hell on this track just going spider <laughs> spider <laughs> Spider, spider, I'm so spider, spider gonna bit me. Ah, spider bit me. No, spider. <laughs> like, like, um, I'm on yeah. those. I also may be just a bit of a Metro Boomin hater, maybe a little bit. I didn't really wow. like Heroes and Villains that much. Mm, um, the I, truth comes out. I just like I did. Like I said that last year. It's like I didn't really care for Heroes and Villains that much. So it's like mm. it's an album. I guess no one heard the home. No one heard the home. I still agree. I listen. No one heard the home. I think Dylan chooses like, the things that I love the most in this world and decides to not like them because I like them. And I, in this, my next, my next album is going to be proof of that. No, no, nobody disagrees with me except I, Dylan. I, when it comes I, time I, to I, say what Mark likes. I'm gonna be. I'm also excited for Metro Boomin and Jid because I know that Jid can fucking kill it given whatever he's given. And that uh, the songs are probably it's not gonna be my whatever he's given. Jid album. <laughs> That's absurd. I think I think so many of the songs on Heroes and Villains and <clears throat> I, oh, okay. Actually, some of my favorite. I realized some of the, my favorite tracks from from uh, this Spider Verse album are actually not produced by. At least one of them is is not like Metro Boomin's not attached to it. Metro Boomin is not does not have the credit on danger he doesn't have the credit on silk and cologne which i really i love silk and cologne actually i think it's like super sexy like latin beat mm -hmm. um 
Uh, I was going to say given up the Don Tolliver one. I had, I think Two Chains was another fail in for here, here for me. <laughs> I love Don Tolliver. I loved, it was either Two Chains or 21 Savage. I don't remember. I didn't end up liking the song. Even I love Don Tolliver. Oh, they all look the same to you? bad at rapping a lot <laughs> all right they're just bad oh, at it sometimes God. man but yeah um oh on disc two i actually liked a lot of the songs on this too and then he's not like on on those mm -hmm. um but yeah sometimes a lot of metro Boomin tracks just kind of sound like the same and like they're not bad mm -hmm. they're just like mm -mm. i feel like i was i felt that way about here's and villains i felt like i was listening to some like the same music kind of like over and over well, or at least i, I guess... had to i kind of just maintaining the same energy without getting too much in the way of like you know different sounds well, uh, well, i don't think you understand the sheer scale of the amount of songs that metro boomin has produced I... like it's not like it's not metro like, like just stuff recently like metro boomin has done Metro Boomer is a huge oh, producer, everything. and he's made a lot of songs that I've really liked. But like, I can't like I I don't like the idea of him being like a full, like having full production control, like he did on this or like he did on, like nearly like he did on this or and like he did on Heroes and Villains. It just felt like I don't know. I just needed. I I can't. I, I shake it up. I could probably listen to like a full. <laughs> I listen to a full Alchemist produced album. I listen to a full Pharrell produced album. I listen to a full like, Yay produced album. Probably if it's if it's okay, if it's not fucking insane. Um, I'm not telling you guys that I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I said and produced. Self you, you, you did. You did. You loved Utopia. <laughs> you said that. You already admitted. It. <laughs> All right. Um, We'll I'm we'll see you two before I say it is all on I'm on the right. two sides of this battlefield come come I, next year's. I love, I love year I'm you. sure I'm not gonna hate. I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy it. Well, let let me put the third point out there. We all know Nick hated the song Annihilate because Lil Wayne's on there. So. I I don't know why it doesn't have. I swear I did save this album, but for whatever reason, the version I pulled up doesn't. Ah, here we go. This one. Which one was it called? Oh, Annihilator. Uh, Annihilator Annihil first. Oh one. yeah, and it's like that's the thing with, with uh, this album. No, I did like, actually the, save the that one. <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't need the songs to literally be like, oh my god, Nas Morales is actually maybe one of the tracks that annoys me the most. I've liked a lot of Nas's recent li recent releases actually. Like I really liked, um, fucking what was it, uh, King's Disease Three. I thought that was actually mm -hmm. really good. Um, but like some like his 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 part on 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 the Spider Man album. He's 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 rapping like such a fucking annoying old head, and like and he's just like he's there's like so much like of that Spider Man like it has to be like Spider. -Man oh, is it power, is power responsibility? It's like call me Peter Parker. It's like it's like too too much like <laughs> too on the nose. It's yeah. too on the nose. It's too like he's always about rap like an being. Old head. Was this the out the 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 credits track? That played over the the credits for the movie. Yes, I believe so. so. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's the that. last one that appears on the album, so yeah. yeah I think it is the credits. Okay. Um. Yeah, but still, I mean, fantastic. We're gonna talk about it for movies of the year. Fantastic movie, and I still do agree. Like, great soundtrack. I don't know if I put it as highly as you do, but it's it's definitely fucking it. It's well, I think it's well produced. I I like pretty much. Yeah, I, I like the majority of the tracks on it. Um, and yeah, we'll see, uh, Mark and, and Dylan on the other side, on opposite sides of the battlefield when 2024 ends. Dylan's gonna fucking hate it. I already know. And, uh, and this Colo battle it comes down. out. This is but, to be for down. now, this movie is gonna have to go truly <laughs> insane. Alright, for now, fellas, before we, before we go, go get past two hours, uh, Mark, what is your album of the year? What you got? Okay, uh, my album of the year, I want to make it clear. I picked first on the albums so uh my top album is my actually my favorite this is your actual year. number one yes this is my actual number one mm -hmm. uh how do you sleep at night by tizo touchdown an amazing album uh it's just it's so good i love hearing like people be able to do shit that they just like they're obviously having fun they're not like doing stuff because they have to or they're not doing a genre because they have to but they're just having fun and it feels like Tizo Touchdown is having as much fun as he possibly can doing all of this stuff 
Um, ever since I went to go see uh, uh, Call Me If You Get Lost in uh, on con- in concert, as soon as I heard Tizo Touchdown open for him, it was Tizo Touchdown, Vince Staples, Cali Uches, it was amazing. But yeah, as soon as I heard Tizo, um, it was just from there. I love hearing like his like weird croony parts. I love that the songs don't always go where you would want them to go. Like there's some parts where you were like, damn, I wish he had just like continued that. But I think the point that it changes and it's never always the same thing is a part of the whole experience. It feels like, um, I don't know. It just feels like there's always something there. It's always something interesting. And uh, this is technically because this came out in 2024, uh, disc two is only is only three songs, but the uh, the deluxe that was released on Friday is also really oh good. shit a really great. Wow, that literally is the end yesterday. Of Holy cow! Yeah, uh, it's 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 a great. I think altogether, just this album is really good. There are some parts where I don't. There are some parts where I'm like, all right, this is this is corny, but then it changes really quickly. So it's not like it's it's just there for a little. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It, it's I love it. It's a great album. Yeah. Dylan hates it because he hates me. No, no. <laughs> I so, okay. I was gonna say. So I first tried listening to this album like maybe like a month after it released. I just kind of like heard of it, uh, and I was expecting. I didn't realize what kind of album it was gonna be. So I remember like walking down the street and it's like, okay, I'll listen to Teaser Touchdown, see how it sounds. First song played, and I was not expecting it to mm. be like this kind of. I don't know, like more 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 rock inspired like kind of emo y honestly like punk track and i i generally don't really like that kind of music and like i just kind of but i like a, the next song kind of played and it kind of played just kind of through me and i was like uh i i maybe maybe this is not actually what it, this is maybe this is not my kind of music so I, I put it down basically until like now when you like put it on your list and i like listened to it uh between like yesterday and today and this time I think one of the things that helped is that, like, since when I first tried to listen to it, in general, I was in, like, the time I was in a very much better mood in mm. general. Just, like, in, in general, like, not just, like, in the moment, but, like, probably, like, in my life. Yeah. Uh, so that first, so I, like, that first song actually, like, was not, was not, you know, bad to me. I still thought it was, like, a little goofy, but, like, I had more fun with it. And then as I progressed further down through the the album, I found myself going, like, wow a lot of this is like this is really fun this is really fun there are some really good ideas on here a really you know there's a i i like there's some songs in here that i really really like um i think maybe my favorite song off it might be neighborhood uh the one from like the three perspectives uh yeah. I thought neighbor I yeah, thought that this neighborhood. Really oh yeah that was really interesting yeah that neighbor. one was like i thought that one was like really nice i thought that was really really cool i thought that was really creative uh mm. that sounded sounded great um i also oh man i actually really also liked too easy like the way that song is constru- like structured yeah like, the how how it starts off and then how the back half kind of sets the context and it it completely changes the feel um i thought that was like super cool like uh, this album was like really creative um and lots of fun i, I thought it was good yeah no, same thing. Like I hadn't heard of Tizo until I guess I would have heard them on Utopia, but I didn't pay as much attention to them as as a feature uh, until coming back and seeing this on on your list. And I yeah, I like the majority of the tracks. They they have interesting ideas going on. I'm trying to remember this. I feel I like this. Thought. The, this uh. I'm on a slid on that song. Oh song. yeah, I would Janelle... say sweet Fouché is was. Short oh yeah, Fouché so went crazy. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Did some of these tracks? I'm trying to remember without having to replay them for myself. Some of these. Did some of these also have them from? No, I'm trying to remember just like vibe wise. Were there tracks that had like rock influences on them in this album? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot. lot Okay. Yeah, that was like kind of. A lot of it was like kind of punk rocky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. All right. I was just making sure I was remembering the right thing. And like that goes back into what we were talking about earlier. Just like a lot of of artists in the in the hip hop realm are seem are starting to to bring in some more rock influences into them and I'm I'm fucking here for it. I I love that shit. I, I, uh, Bobby like, knows that's I, my I, secret. I, I, no, that's my secret uh 
uh, that's my secret favorite genre is <laughs> a lot of punk rock. Yeah. And we all, and, and of course we all have to pay respect to, to the, the one that absolutely did it best. No, no doubt for uh, at all. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly, right guys? The, the best hip hop to, or rap to rap to punk rock transfer yeah, in the history sorry. of the industry. Sorry, I, you've been misinformed. <laughs> Mark is a, Mark is actually a Tom McDonald fan. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't fuck with machine gun kelly <laughs> uh, nice try playing that sound effect kobe i did not i did not hear it i have that shit turned off for safety on streams uh oh, yeah but i i think that uh my favorite my favorite changes a lot based off of because like a lot of these songs and parts of these songs because these songs are sometimes broken into like two or three parts get stuck in my head uh i think like i really like the uh, like every time i listen to like mood swings i like really want to listen to like a like a thundercat album and every oh, time it's, i listen that's, to it's got, it's got a fucking I'm really surprised that's a it's that's a bass that goes blonky it goes, <laughs> like that's a blonky <laughs> fucking bass that is like so, it's very thundercat how is that not Thundercat playing that part of that song? I don't he, know. He, how he doesn't not. have. I don't think there's like a there's a break where he goes fucking insane on the bass. Is the thing that makes it not a Thundercat song. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So like that that uh, that and then like, but I think that generally my favorite song, like the first song that I listened to, I was like, I'm gonna listen to this song a lot. It was sweet. I think sweet was really 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 good. Um, and on the and on the deluxe, it's Third Coast. Third, co yeah, that's my favorite from the. And um, but out of respect sure. is funny as hell. Basically, out of respect the concept is so out of respect silly. Is like, I can't. He's like, I'm not gonna. I'm not. She gave me her number, but I'm not gonna have sex with her. Out of respect. Out of respect. And he's like, Well, I mean, I'm just gonna kiss her a little bit. Out of respect. Out of respect. <laughs> it's like fucking. Huh? It's so good. It's such a great concept. It's like I'm gonna put her ankles behind her head out of respect. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to it's listen so, to these that deluxe song songs. Is so goofy. Like I didn't I, I I don't know. I like I didn't put it in my liked songs, but that song is so fucking silly. I follow him on TikTok, so I've been hearing clips of all these damn songs while he's got on tour. And oh, I've been uh, so now I finally got to hear. It. Also, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna find a way to see him on tour when he comes uh, up to Seattle, which will be cool. Hell yeah, man! Um, yeah, well, out that's respect. out of respect. <laughs> out of respect. <laughs> that's uh, that's that does it for all of our albums. Um, we've I'm I'm down to go for a little bit longer. I know Dylan's got some honorable mentions. Kobe's got a dishonorable yeah. mention. Um, but if you want to start with your your honorable mentions, Dylan, because you you, so me, you listen to yeah, a lot I, of music I, this year, right? Yeah, I listen to a few. I still I'm not even done listening, to, catching up on all my 2023 music. But like, I'm pretty sure that like it would be insanely hard for my like actual my top three to, to really be different between uh, for for like scary, scary and the hose, ugly and and lahai. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I got but... some. I got some honorable mentions as well. Yeah, just shoot them out. Thinking about it. Uh, shout out Mitski, man. That yeah, album Mitski, is insane. That album was was Sounds that was feeding crazy. for that was feeding for number three. Um, that album. I was feeding for my number one. That was a. I love that album. I've listened to it a lot. It is. It is. It's. It's a. It's such a good. It's just such a good album about love, and the nature of love in all its different forms and Mitski does a fantastic Mitski's voice is of course insanely beautiful she's an incredibly talented singer uh her guitar is haunting <clears throat> and and beautiful like it's it's just fo it's folksy in some of the best ways it's yeah. mm -hmm. it's a it's emotional it's an emotionally taxing album but it's so good for it um give it a shot. That, yeah what that was that was shit? That was fighting for my number. That was that was definitely fighting. That's an honorable mention. Mm. I'm gonna try to keep keep yeah, yeah, yeah. most of them quick, but like um, uh, Jesse wears. Uh, that feels good. Um, if you didn't think you wanted to listen to to like disco pop in two twenty twenty fucking four twenty twenty three, uh, <laughs> you you should listen to this album. This album is one of the most fun, just enjoyable. Uh, it's it's disco. It's fucking 
kind of funky. It's it's super well sung. Her voice is fantastic. It's sexy. Like I I I'm not I'm not usually gay enough for this, but holy shit, she is fucking <laughs> she is actually mother on this fucking track. She is absolutely just fucking singing. She's singing about being a mom and being a freak. Hell yeah. On this record. Like it's it, We like, love milf like she, music. She is she, this this album rocks. It's it's probably the the album that Lo Fi Milf beats if, to listen if, to. It's not it's certainly <laughs> not lo fi. This is <laughs> budget disco music, baby. It's so much fun. It is fun as fuck. I've like if I had to pick an album that I wasn't gonna like have to you know feel like have to like feel so much about or like yeah, think yeah. a lot about, it would be this album. Like this album just a joy, front to back. Uh Billy Woods uh maps. Maybe the best like abstract experimental hip hop record of the year. He's super colorful. Um, so much just like great imagery, great wordplay. Um, and it's it's yeah. Um uh who's the fucking Kenny Siegel is the the main the main uh producer. He's he's it's a collab with Kenny Siegel and like the pr- production is, is great, works super well. Mm-hmm. Definitely worth a listen if you like abstract experimental hip hop. Sofian Stevens Javelin dedicated to his dead gay lover. Oh, uh, somehow not as emotionally crushing to me as the Mitski album. I think a lot <laughs> of people uh, are are crushed by this. I have like some gripes about like it, it sounds like, really fuzzy sometimes, but his 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 wordplay or well hit wordplay. His his just lyrics, his songwriting is so like beautiful and it's absolutely in in memoriam and sorrow and it's another album just about like uh love and and losing it and mm-hmm. and the space between this the space between being in love losing love it's 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 gorgeous Hell yeah. um that's that's i'll probably leave my honorable mentions there i could talk <clears> about <throat> more albums but yeah uh mark, mark did you have any ones would yeah. be kali uches red moon and venus that was a fun album um i i really i really like that album but i think that um i think also Olivia Rodrigo's guts, Ooh, really, yeah. really, really good. Um, and uh, I, it, one album that I found interesting. I don't know. I don't think I know if it's good yet. But uh, did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard from Lana Del Rey? Ah. So, fun fact: all three of those are literally not. Not that I dislike them because I, I I don't think I logged them if I really dislike the albums, but those are actually my bottom three albums of the year. Oh <laughs> my god! Six. For the, the divide continues. This war between mm. you two. But I I like them. I like them generally mm. speaking. I it was, they were just like they were near the bottom for me. Just like mm. all. Then you like the you like the No Name album as well, right? Personal. I didn't get a chance to listen to the No Name album. Ah, okay. I heard it was good, but then I also heard I don't know I I heard No Name was like randomly slinging shit around. Mm-hmm. I, she's i think she's just kind of prone to do that i mean that shouldn't stop me from listening to it but like i just I just didn't get around to it yeah mm. uh well yeah those are my those are mine yeah cool uh kobe do you i don't know if you had any honorable mentions but you can you can bring up your dishonorable mention if you want <laughs> uh uh one <laughs> honorable mention i joked around with this but <laughs> earlier in in like the discussion of what's going to be album of the year uh, but usually every year I like to try to go outside of what I usually listen to and just try to experiment. And uh, Fantano kept gushing about this album called Zach Bryan. And I was like, okay, I don't like fucking country, but let me like, because Zach Bryan like went out of like a pop. And once again, an artist trying to take on a different genre, which two artists try to do this year. And one of them is a dishonorable mention of Post Malone with <laughs> Austin, uh, completely try to change his sound and, failing in every step of the way (laughs) uh but zach bryan uh kind of interests me that this this whole album like was a portrait of regret that was like very notable and his vocal performance was super haunting throughout this entire thing like it this album blended like storytelling with like heartland rocks and it's just it's a very intriguing album i would suggest trying it if it's not your vibe i understand like i think it's the most intriguing album i've listened to all year and it's been getting like insane like reviews from people Mm. and be like yo actually just try this uh 
Yeah, dishonorable mention is Post Malone decided to. I got two dishonorable mentions. Uh, Post Malone <laughs> decided to release Austin this year, and I am a pretty big Post Malone fan. Uh, but however, his albums have been interesting. Twelve Carat Toothache, I thought to be very fine. Uh, it was more Post Malone, but there was nothing new about it, and half of it I just didn't really care for. Like, especially the back half of that album, I think is pretty poor mm-hmm. compared to the first half. This man decided to re- release Austin in 2023. And I think, Murky, you were the only other one. Mark, you might have listened to Austin. I, I did listen I did. to Austin, but I've only listened to it once because I, I never got don't. brought back to it. I I don't know what happened here. I cannot, I, I honestly like cannot comprehend what happened to this thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it, I, for some like, it was something. Like, I just. I, I, I think I, I, I think it. I described it as like somehow like a weird play on easy listening was what i felt yeah. when i was coming out of that album like it was just so much it was nothingness like i could hear well, it in an elevator it's hard to listen to yeah. <laughs> it's like an elevator music album like almost yeah that's what it felt like to yeah. me it's so like it's so out of his style that it's very jarring to listen to i've only listened to it twice because the first time i listened to it i'm like wow that was dog shit i need to listen to it again to confirm if it was dog shit <laughs> like it was one of those things that i was just so shocked I'm like, what happened here <laughs> was is that as bad as i like listened to like maybe i'm just like not in the right state of mind so i like came back to it a few months later and i'm just like wow yeah i do not like this album one bit i don't like the sounds he's going for i appreciate that it's his most vulnerable album i would say like it's definitely him reflecting on his life a lot but the the production quality the the a lot of the lyrics just felt cheesy the beats i just did not vibe with this album at all which is sad to say the other Why don't one you close back the, up to us big dog how about how much you stop <laughs> the the other <laughs> album out. that the other album that uh uh, made me mad. Uh, Mark and I had a whole discussion about kind of tying back to an earlier point of when rappers should be leaving the game when they have nothing else to say. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say this as <sighs> sincerely as possible. Drake, stop. Just stop. <laughs> Please. For all the dogs, I hated so fucking much. I thought people liked it's For All not- the Dogs. I haven't heard it, but. <sighs> Once again, Drake is just rapping about his rich boy problems and. I don't care. This man has put out four, five albums now in the span of a year. You can't be hitting with all of them. And guess what? It shows that he's not taking the time and putting the craft into his albums. Like it, it is, is, I, I find it impressive how much quantity over quality this man does. Like he just keeps putting them out at a pace. I, I know the, the Drake fans will come with pitchforks and torches and be like, "Oh my god, though no, this album is it's old." No, it's, they're all it's not old. Very, they're all seeing yeah. the next podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah all yeah. the Drake fans that are listening. I just <laughs> could not stand this album. I have listened to it three times. And each time I disliked it more. Oh, <laughs> Drake's out here putting I, albums out like Viper. And listen, did, did Drake locked somebody in his basement. <laughs> Wait, was that Viper that did that? That was Viper. Oh, oh no. shit! I heard about it. I heard it was a rapper. I didn't know it was Viper. It was That's Viper. Listen, oh no! I, I I think it's cute that Drake let Adonis rap, but my God, <laughs> let him have his father son <laughs> moment. Did it better. Yeah, I'm better. gonna say North did it better. Like compare the two children rappers, like it's just <laughs> dog water. Oh, oh god. Yeah. I did not you're, like for all the dogs at all. Oh. You're not you're not ready. You're not ready for when Anita Max Wayne comes out and blows you away. <laughs> uh and then I guess Max Wayne. Uh, I guess my final <laughs> final honorable mention. It, I I memed about this before the show, but uh, Ludwig Göransson's Oppenheimer. Uh, <laughs> phenomenal. You're a real soundtrack, soundtrack enjoyer, aren't you? Real big soundtrack uh, enjoyer. Be right. No, I true. Do, I, That's uh, true. Yeah, I I do write to like movie soundtracks that help me get in the scenes. And Oppenheimer, just like honestly, like joking aside, just as like music, that is like one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've heard, like in terms of an original soundtrack in a long time. Uh, very, very good. You're just reminding me that I need to put on the fucking Dune soundtrack again sometime and have myself blown away by Hans once more. Um, yeah, yeah, Hans. 
But, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, for my, I'll, I'll do my dishonorable mention first. It's the only thing I can think of. And it's the only album that I can remember where I listened to it. And then the more of the band's discography that I went back to listen to again, I dis- I liked it less and less, which is fucking Fall Out Boy's new album. Um, so much yeah, for Stardust. I, I, I... I forgot about that. I did listen yeah, to that. Yeah, it, it, it came good. out this it came out in 2023 like towards the beginning and like when they were dropping the singles I'm just like, "Oh my god, yes, I'm I love fucking love Fall Out Boy. There's more Fall Out Boy. Let's go." And then I heard it and I was just like, "Yeah, this album's great. I'm having a great time with this Fall Out Boy album." And then I went on like a um, kind of an absurd Fall Out Boy binge, which is part of the reason I didn't listen to that many 2023 albums. I was just fucking on the hook for for Fall Out Boy for most of the summer at least, if not more than that. Um, and I'm not sure why, but, like, I dug into, like, their fucking, you know, non-main album entries as well, like, their fucking PAX AM EP, and there's, like, also, like, a, like, a a three-track single, which they already talk about Chicago a lot in a lot of their music, but it's just three tracks that are entirely just jerking off the city of Chicago, which, I mean, listen, more power to you, fellas. You love, you love your hometown, good for you. Um, but, like, that shit, just every single one of those tracks that I listened in their backlog kind of outdoes so much for Stardust in, in comparison as I look back on it. Um, and that's a bummer. That's called I, the Panic at the Disco effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I I don't know. I don't know what happens. It, but it, is, it wasn't even like a mania. It was like they did Mania, which is like super just pop, you know, mainstream poppy and like not really rock at all. So much for Stardust had rock back in, like, it had more rock in it than, like, their, you know, Mania and shit like that, but, like, it still just, it didn't hit. It just didn't hit, like, their old shit. I don't know. It just, I I don't put it on anymore. Um, but, yeah, that was kind of disappointing, and I, I say that, and then I'm still, I have tickets to see them for... I guess my, the second time I saw them once this year or in 2023, I'm going to see them at when we were young because uh, they're headlining that this year uh, in Vegas in October. So I'll be seeing them again, but they're probably just going to play all their actual bangers. So that'll be fine. Um, all their good music. All their good music. <laughs> uh, for honorable mentions, um, let's see. There was the da, da, da. oh uh, fucking a Hosier album. The Unreal on Earth came out fucking beautiful kind of in the same it was honestly a toss-up between lahai and and like uh unreal on earth like i was c- comparing and contrasting and they're they're pretty close to me um and vibes and like how much i enjoy them um on the folksy side of things uh city and color put out a new album that had a similar theme to the foo fighters album where uh and I, i'm i'm all, i'm a little worried that i might have been mixing up the people that passed away in each band's lives because it was it was really similar where's the description for the artist um yeah his uh bu- 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 uh his cousin and um the produ- a producer and engineer passed away um during the writing of of this new album and so it's also an album about like loss and moving on and remembering those that were you know around you and stuff um and another super haunting piece from them um so i really like that and it doesn't i don't know if it really counts necessarily because it originally came out 22 but it is another situation where like a deluxe version came out with like eight more songs so uh stick season by noah khan i I love some, I love me some good folksy shit, and Noah Khan delivered, and I absolutely fell for that shit this year, um, and listened to it a lot, so, uh, big shout out to them. Uh, Dwellings also put out a new album, but I'm kind of here or there on that. I have moments where I love it, and moments where I, where I don't, but, um, yeah, those are my three honorable mentions, and, uh, I think... Let's see, I don't got anything else you want to throw out there. I think that'll do it for 2023 albums of the year. To, to quote Fallout Boy, as you mentioned, and their, of course, best track from last year, We Didn't Start the Fire. Oh, shut up. I'm not even, I don't Second want to think about that one. World Trade, what else do I have to say? <laughs> 
Oh, God. We're going to be fucking 50s, 60s, 70s, and some modern artist is going to pull the same shit in, in the same time frame that, that Fall Out Boy's done. Didn't they with the original. George Floyd with Metroid? Yes. I, yes, they did. Yep. Yes, they did. Um, okay. Just the lyrical yeah. geniuses they are. Can't wait to see them again. Uh, but yeah. I'm snap with that one. <laughs> thank, you all, thank you all so much for joining me. Um, this has been a lovely discussion. I've genuinely enjoyed learning about a lot of these albums that I hadn't heard before. Um, and I hope that anyone watching this has uh, learned about some new albums that they might enjoy as well uh, down the road. Um, so until we see you all again, thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe out there. And peace out.